and Squiggles is back to reclaim their prize of the small first to redeem. I should open the door. I always forget that I need to leave the door open. Otherwise, my room will melt me. And the big first. How are you doing, Squiggles? <sighs> I have to resist the urge to, uh, stream Persona 3 Reload immediately after this game. <clears throat> Just got off some Lethal Company with friends. Nice. Fucked up where, like, my setup sits. I'm trying to adjust it, and you could probably hear me trying to shift stuff around. <sighs> Waiting for your collector's edition. I still need to go and get my copy. I ended up having to work over at the theater tonight. And tomorrow. Which also, uh, I'm gonna probably be repeating this a whole bunch of times throughout stream, but uh, there will not be a stream tomorrow night. Because uh, I am double checking that I'm getting this correct. Yeah. So, I won't be streaming tomorrow night because I will be streaming rando with a couple friends. Uh. Any hours after my usual end time? Basically, I need to sleep early. And we're gonna be doing a big uh, multi world. I need to double check this, actually. Sorry, I know that we should probably be starting, but... <clears throat> Gonna buy PS5 Digital Premium. I think, it, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to be at nine. Yeah, nine my time, which is about three hours after I usually end. Granted that there's no technical difficulties, which, you know, trying to set up an archipelago randomizer with five people is, <laughs> you know, how that's probably going to go. There might be technical difficulties. I was about to say, I'm pretty sure we left one of these so that I could, uh, have an easy spot to resume. Is that what time it is usually for you when I end? Police are still busy investigating in here, then. <clears throat> but Gina's nowhere to be seen. Where is she? Yes, it has been blissfully quiet, hasn't it? You're in PST? I'm an MST.
Perhaps she's out investigating on her own, practicing what her boss taught her. Well, I, I suspect she'll be back before long. Shall we wait? Actually... Something different about this room since last time we were here, isn't there? We could always use the time to investigate more thoroughly. I think so. This little trunk wasn't here before, was it? Oh, it appears to be made of metal. It must be very heavy. <clears throat> How in the world did you manage to get that to embed as a link without the bot flagging you? <laughs> I'm genuinely, like, surprised at that. <laughs> Usually the bot is like, hey, uh, even if you're trying to send, like, clip links, it'll strike you down. <laughs> I wonder to whom it belongs. There's some initials on the outside. Look, T G. Let's ask one of the policemen if they know how it came to be here. Boy, er. boy, what do you think you're doing? That's my trunk. That is. Hands off, Gina. Where were you hiding? I don't know. You leave some in a. You leave something unattended for a few seconds, and every Tom, Dick, and Harry's got his greedy eyes on it. Did something weird with the bracket, too? Yeah, it turned into an arrow. Weird. Um, just a wild guess, Gina, but... What? Spit it out, Odo! Is it fair to say that you've only owned that trunk since this morning's trial? What? W what are you trying to say? Come on, this trunk goes with me everywhere. Always as. Where have, you, uh, where have you been the last year? Trying not to incur your wrath, mainly. You should hear him talking at the yard now. They should be ashamed ashamed of themselves. They're saying that it was the boss who killed all them bludgers. Ah, you mean the whole Reaper thing? Yeah. Apparently, the boss was investigating stuff that no one else at the yard knew nothing about. And stuff to do with all them criminals what got off scot-free. Yes. Once prosecuted by Lord Van Zeeks. <clears throat> Who used bribery and corruption to evade conviction. Well, that, well then obviously it was that bloomin' Reaper giving the orders, weren't it? But why would people be suspecting Inspector Gregson of being involved in the killings? There was a notebook hidden in his office. Oh no. <clears throat> this doesn't sound good. It had details about all the crimes that have been pegged as the Reaper's work. What? No. Did you see it, Gina? Did you see that notebook? And they wouldn't flame and let me. Because I'm just an apprentice, apparently. But it was me who found it, and he was my boss. That's right. Gonna be lurking, playing some Mining of Isaac. I was pretty miffed about it, so... I sneaked a peek at what it said anyway. Oh! It's our Gina. So, you managed to see what was written in Gregson's secret notebook anyway, did you? Did you?
the way I see it, it's my right to read what he, what he wrote. Thanks for the hydrate squiggles. And what had he written, Gina? Dates and times, places, names, and a long list of them. <clears throat> All details about the blood is supposed to have been done in by the Reaper. But there could be an explanation for that. <clears throat> Perhaps it was a record of the inspector's investigations into the Reaper's activities. Exactly, that's what I said. But the first thing, uh, that's the first thing you'd think, right? As it happens, it was full of names I recognized anyway. Oh, the Reaper's targets were almost exclusively known leaders of London's criminal underworld. Hey, Sachi, how are you doing? Also, now that now that there's more people here, I can uh, say the thing again. Uh, I most likely will not be streaming tomorrow. Because I need to get sleep. Or, well, I will not be streaming tomorrow morning. Uh, I am planning on partaking in a multi-world randomizer with some friends. But it's it's later in the day than my, than my usual stream time. It's going to be starting most likely at 9 my time, which is about three hours after my normal stream time ends. Well, yeah, but there was one name right at the end that was a bit odd. The end of the list, you mean? I'm pretty sure that date against it was the 31st of October. Oh! The day before the uh, the inspector was found dead. So, what was the odd name? It weren't like a name I'd ever seen before. It was something like, uh... Nah, it's no good. I can't remember it. I don't think it was an English name, put it that way. Oh dear. What a pity. There was something else, too. I don't know if it matters, but the same name kept coming up over and over. Shin, it was. Don't suppose it means anything, but... Did you say... Shin? Also, I... With that, uh... With that announcement that I'm not going to be streaming tomorrow, I will put a ping out in the Discord for it later. Just as, like, a reminder. Eh? What? Does it mean something? Lord Van Zeeks knew the name, too. He mentioned her as well. The woman who actually did the deeds. Oh, shit. Thank you for actually saying that, Squiggles. Uh, yeah, don't worry. That's why I'm not going to be streaming at my normal time. Tomorrow is because I need to sleep. Because I'm not going to, you know, stay up through my normal stream time and then three hours later start another stream that's probably going to go on for like six hours because it's a five-player multi-world. But yeah, I totally forgot that you can pin uh, messages at the top of chat. Uh, what was the last thing that you remember, Banana?
uh, <clears throat> us meeting in Asogi's office, uh, we met with the coroner. <clears throat> if I send this. Uh, why can I not pin this message? I'm trying to pin a message to the top of chat and it's like unable to pin. Please, please try again. That one worked. Why did, why did pinning the, uh... Where Twitch is so dumb. Oh, whoops. Sorry, I didn't mean to delete that message. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I can't pin that message. You've been moderated. Now we find out her name appeared in Gregson's secret notebook. My stream usually happens at around 8.50 to 9 p.m. for you. Yeah, so, um... <laughs> Rage against the machine. That would probably mean that, uh... My stream would be starting at, like... What? So I usually stream for about three and a half hours. But then th three hours after that would be six and a half. Six and a half hours after 9 p.m. Would put it at what? 3.30 a.m.? Yeah, that's fair. The whole, the whole thing with it is that it, it's like the only time that like we could manage to get everyone available. So I was I was fully expecting, you know, oh, most of my most of my people that are regulars in my stream aren't uh awake after my stream. So We haven't seen you for a little while, have we, Gina? Well, of course not. I've been busy, ain't I? Investigating in that. The lads at the yard are trying to trace the boss's movements the day before it happened. Thank you. <laughs> Normally in bed at 12 a.m. I mean, it's it's better than it's better than me being in bed at 6 a.m. The day before. That would be the undercover investigation into the Red-Headed League, then. Only the boss didn't go, did he? You found some cove what was pretending to be him, didn't you, Odo? Yes. It was Mr. Vigil who actually went to the park on Lime Street that day, posing as Gregson. Well, anyway, you ain't the only one turning stuff up. I got me own ways of getting results. When me and my partner here get together, there's nothing we can't track down. Oh, little Toby. He's such a faithful friend. So, have you tracked anything down then? What do you think, eh? Of course we have. Can't tell you though, police business, innit? She thought she was going for the bazooka again. To be fair, I don't think Gin I don't think Gina has had the I nearly called her Ginny. Uh I don't think Gina has had the bazooka. I think she's only had the uh the break action pistol. Um I'm pretty sure that only Iris has had the uh bazooka. Anyway, the point is, if you lot ever need any help, you know who to turn to, right? Me and the around you. Right. Because he looks oh so hellish to be- er, honest. Hellhound. 
why are these ladies <laughs> obsessed with explosives? Well, to be fair, G... I nearly called her Ginny again. Iris is Iris Brain. Um, Gina stole the gun that she has from Iris. And Iris thought it would be fun to keep supplying her with ammo. Um, Gina, about your hellhound there. Chief Inspector Toby, you mean? He's the pride of the force, he is. In Japanese, police dog means something quite different. And not altogether uh, and not altogether nice to those involved in crime. But here in Britain, it's a wonderful compliment, it seems. For a canine at least. It should be. After all, in the great in the great exhibition case the other day. It was Toby here who managed to locate Drebber's workshop. Maybe it's time for another another demonstration of what this super dog can do, eh? Do we have something the chief inspector could catch this scent of? I wonder. Well, Chief Inspector Toby, you wouldn't mind having a sniff of this. <laughs> I'm gonna- I'm gonna use this pose. I'm gonna use this pose on a thumbnail, I know it. He might be a little too keen, don't you think? Yo, Mr. Shins, how are you doing? Welcome in. How was your, uh, how was your stream? Uh, for those of you who don't know me that just came in with the raid, uh, hi, I'm Maddie. Uh, I play a lot of RPGs and visual novels. I don't know why that took me so long to think of the names, but, uh, I'm, I've also been told that I have a very good voice, and it also tends to catch people off guard when I shift right in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> Oh, playing Valhalla. I'm I'm thinking that I'm going to stream Valhalla again soon. Well, okay, soon as in within the next like 6 months. <laughs> There's so much shit coming out. <laughs> Might be a little too keen, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> Chief Inspector made short work of Gina there. Ah, what he's gone to? Oh my, that trunk clearly still has a very strong scent. Yeah, I streamed. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Valhalla was either the second game I ever streamed or third stream I, like third game I ever streamed. I can't remember if I played Sonic Mania, then Valhalla, then Xenogears, or if I did Xenogears, then Valhalla. And I still hold that, I still hold that, that uh, Valhalla playthrough, like, I think I did some good voices for that, and I very much would like to redo it, see if I can top it, you know? Of Inspector Gregson. In other words, it must have belonged to him. Oh, all right. It's a fair cop, I suppose. Nearly got away with it, too. You always talk so proudly of Chief Inspector Toby's nose and what it can achieve. Did it not cross your mind that he might identify something that was right next to us? Yeah, that was a bit of a bloomer, weren't it? It's enough. Oh, right, that's enough now then, Gina. Eh. I think it's time you told us the truth about that trunk. It, it 
work like that. It just weren't. What are you talking about? I know it's going through that head of yours, but it ain't, it ain't what happened. All right then, what did happen? Well. <laughs> Thanks for gifting another sub, Mr. Shins. I appreciate it. Well, like I said before, we're trying to trace the boss's movements. So I let Tobia have a whiff of the boss's overcoat. And as soon as I'd done that, he went off like a shot. Straight to that sandwich. To a sandwich? Not to a bag of chips. Mr. Natahoto, I believe Gina means the witness. Oh, Gina's great, especially in the first Great Ace Attorney. She is so fun in the first Great Ace Attorney. Oh, I forgot about that sandwich. Yeah, he had it in between them the wooden boards of his, the boss's trunk. I mean, when they heard the sound like a gunshot and all piled in here. Exactly. He nabbed it from the scene. Goodness. Me and the chief inspector gave that sandwich a good grillin', and you know what he said? I thought it might fetch a good price. The chap wouldn't be needing it anymore, so... That's all I did. Nothing more. Nothing less. Would you, would you add him any of the cheek of it, eh? And stealing the dead boss's stuff to flog. So Miss Venus wasn't the only one to meddle with the scene of the crime, then. How could they? And so anyway, that's how it happened. And it's a pretty decent trunk, so I figured I might as well make use of it. Is there something wrong with that, eh? Well? Maybe you and Mr. Sandwich should try to find the answer to that question together. I think, perhaps that trunk should be turned over to the police, don't you? What are you on about? I am the police! Gina, if you wouldn't mind, could we maybe examine it? Yeah, alright then. Do what you want with it. I feel like my- okay. This might just be, like, confirmation bias, or- actually, no, that's not even what that is. Uh, I feel like my Gina voice has gotten better as we've gone on because it started off really bad. I am the law. Thank you. We shall make a detailed record of our examination of the witness. What's the matter with Toby? Why is he acting so aggressively toward me all of a sudden? Mr. Narahoto, be careful. It must be the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Toby, boy, what are you doing? You're gonna lick his face off. Mr. Narahoto! Mr. Narahoto! Gina, quickly, hail a carriage. Forget, didn't Phoenix get attacked by a dog at one point? No, it wasn't Phoenix that got attacked by the dog, it was Larry that got attacked by the dog. Oh, Mr. Narahoto, are you alright? Susato. Ah, conscious again at last. A blessed relief, my dear fellow. After all, to drop dead after a moderate licking by a small terrier, most unseemly. What is or isn't seemly is irrelevant here, Mr. Sholmes. That, okay, I have to admit that that falling over sprite for Sholmes has a really weird tendency to look really out of place in certain sections of the background. 
like where he was just there, it looked like he should have hit the table on his way down. I'm so glad there's no lasting damage. How are you feeling? I'm fine, thank you. Did you bring me back here? Oh, what's this on my head? A, a bandage? And sadly, we had no ice. So that's a compress of sugar water. Sugar water? Don't worry, Mr. Nadahoto. It's a first aid treatment that my father taught me. Oh, thank you. So, let us take tea when you're feeling up to it. <laughs> Funny enough, the... Falling, falling over and hitting your head on something like that, it was a bed frame actually, is what killed Kazuma in quotation marks. But of course, no sugar in the patient's cup. Ugh, lump on my head is throbbing sweetly enough, don't worry. Whenever you feel tr ready, then. Are you all right, Mr. Nadahoto? It's rather unusual to find ourselves here in the middle of our investigations. It's, it's just occurred to me that I might have forgotten something when we left this morning. Please don't worry. As long as you continue to investigate thoroughly, you won't go far wrong. Oh, yes, of course. Let's get back to work as soon as possible. Um, thank you for your concern, Mr. Sholmes. My dear fellow, think nothing of it. I must say I was quite startled when I heard that you'd been attacked by a dog. For a moment, I feared that infamous murderer of so many had come back from the dead. You mean the professor? Fortunately, I see your prized throat is unscathed. That stiff, turned-up color of yours obviously afforded some welcome protection. Am I that close to death? All I really remember is the dog licking my face over and over and over again. Well, if you wish to avoid such troubles in the future, a little mustard spread on the cheek should do the trick. I should think that would balance the sweetness of your bandage rather splendidly. Let's have a look inside. I'm surprised it actually opened. I was half expecting it to be locked. Have you seen this huge gash across the side of the trunk here? It's gone right through the leather and into the metal behind. Oh gosh, for a metal chest like this to have been so badly damaged. Whatever made the gash must have struck the side of the trunk with considerable force. Wonder how it happened. Look, there's something inside. Oh, let's see. It appears to be a passport, authorizing him to travel overseas. Was Inspector Gregson about to go on a trip abroad then? Perhaps the date of departure might tell us something. That was... Oh! What is it? It was for travel on the 31st of October. Just one day before the incident. What? Really? Gregson went to France the day before his body was discovered. Hmm. Very interesting. Tobias Gregson. Date of departure within one week from the 31st of October. Port Dunkirk, France. Purpose of travel, police business. Mission for the applicant and one additional person to travel.
thinking, <laughs> thinking he's about to strike a JoJo pose. He does have a very JoJo-esque pose in his uh, set of animations. See? I've been keeping my desk beautifully covered in papers, as always. You really must tidy it all up, Mr. Natahodo. No more excuses. Mr. Susano, the way I see it, all these papers building up on my desk like this are a reminder of my wonderfully diverse daily life. I like to leave them as they are, so I never forget how lucky I am to have such varied experiences. In that case, you should definitely have a thorough tidy. Then you'll be able to see your papers building up all over again and feel that joy renewed. Hey, Lobster, how are you doing? Still can't beat her in an argument, even though I'm the lawyer here. My desk is just as it was before I left. Sumi ink and a calligraphy brush. And though we're in England now. It strikes me as typically you, Miss Susato. Typically not you at the same time. Well, I do enjoy all the wonderful new things to come out of the West and in the Cultural Revolution, of course. Doing pretty good. But I'm not ready to give up my brush just yet. Anyway, susato san can write more neatly with a brush than most people can with a pen. Practice makes perfect, as they say. Susato, why do you have a cardboard cutout of an orange on your table? about this, Miss Susato? Do you notice anything unusual about it? I, I'm so sorry. I don't know. I'll redouble my efforts and spend more time doing research so that next time I won't let you down. I think perhaps you're taking your role as a judicial assistant a little too far. It's winter and she misses her kotatsu. Man. I want... like... I wish that I had a proper table that I could have, like, an actual Kotatsu on. Kotatsu seem comfy as fuck. The steam is rising gently from the kettle, as always. Yes, it doesn't feel right somehow, unless it is. But the steam has an unusual scent today. And perhaps the sweet potatoes that I bring back from Japan with me are ready. Mr. Natahodo, I heard that, you know. Tears of joy, Miss Susato, from my mouth. Whenever you serve me tea, it always takes me back to Japan. Okay, have a good have a good day or night, Playlux, or however you pronounce your name. I always forget. Whenever you serve me tea, it always takes me back to Japan. I know you're not particularly fond of the bitter taste, are you? So I do always try to pick out less bitter matcha for you. Those often serve up an unusually mellow blend, it's true. The anticipation of the taste in my mouth makes me bitterly worried anyway. It's very difficult for you, isn't it? Okay, question. If I try to move... Hmm. Your room across the hall is undisturbed, of course. I don't suppose I'd be permitted to see inside now that you're back, though, would I? You know very well that only Iris is allowed inside. Yes, I heard you two giggling together in there again last night. You can visit Mr. Sholmes in his room, Mr. Natahodo. Last time I did that, he tried to convince me to drink some strange concoction he'd mixed up. All 
the sea life seems very content in there, I must say. Noticed something recently, actually. The anemones breed at almost at the at a most extraordinary rate. Oh, really? It's a mystery why the whole seabed isn't buried in a mountain of them, actually. Oh, how splendid. That really is a mystery, isn't it? Wish there was someone here to explain Susato-san's strange reaction to that. Okay, so... This is the letter of introduction your father gave us. Yes, he's clearly well-respected if he's able to give out letters like that. Definitely. Professor Mikotoba is obviously held in high regard outside Japan as well as in. I'm so proud of everything he's accomplished. A letter of introduction for me, or from me would only hold good with Mr. Natsume, ex I expect. And Iris, maybe. supposed to be leaving and going somewhere? It's a lovely photograph we took together when I had to leave London. Though it was a sad day. But I happily have the same photograph on display in my room at home, you know? Now that we're all back together again, it'd be nice to take a new photograph. Oh yes, that would be wonderful. That Daruma doll is still winking at me. Look. I wonder when he'll finally get his other eye filled in. Yes, I wonder. Oh, you should know, Susato-san. I entrusted the task to you. The truth is, I've already decided when that will be. What? Really? When? That's my little secret. The spade is still here, look. Please, Mr. Narhoto, it's not a spade. As I think you well know, it's a shovel. Didn't take long to reignite that old argument. Ah, I have an idea. Let's give the implement a name, like Professor Harebrain named his tools. Oh, I never thought of doing that. From now on, then, let's call it Ryunosuke. No, no, no. It's clearly much more of a Susato. Old argument has taken a new and unexpected turn, it seems. I thought that the difference between a spade and a shovel is that a spade has, like, a sharp edge on it. Because it's supposed to be able to, like, pierce the ground better. What on earth is going on in here? I'm having a bad dream? <laughs> Ah, uh, no. It's an old German folk song. Rather fine rendition, I think. 
That's the least of my concerns. Um, Iris. Iris? What's the matter? Um, who is that sprawling... I mean, that relaxed gentleman over there? Iris? Uh, is she even listening? Excuse me, sir. I do apologize for troubling what you whilst you're singing so merrily, but... Would you be so kind enough to explain the situation? All that worked. A crooning gentleman and a mute young girl. A rather tantalizing juxtaposition. And one that appears to have incited the gods of deduction within me to find their voices, too. Oh god, we're doing a dance of deduction for this? Ah, Mr. Sholmes, do you mean... The strains of reasoning within me are playing now as a delightful duet. Iris giving someone a pipe bomb outside of their mailbox's murder. If I could f I think if I can find this Iris sprite, I think I will use this one as a, uh, as a thumbnail shot as well. One melody sings of a reunion full of nostalgia, whilst the other is a morose theme about the great secret you're trying so desperately to conceal, Iris. He's turned as white as a sheet. And so as usual, you've instantly seen to the very heart of the matter. And by the time my own brief performance is over, I feel sure this gentleman's song will reach its finale. So then, to music land, where all is sweetness and delicacy and harmony. Pray, do enjoy Herlock Sholmes' latest logic and reasoning spectacular. <laughs> they definitely just threw this in here as like a, we needed a, <laughs> a great deduction here in this investigation to spice things up. Firstly, we consider the gentleman's nationality. Clearly he's a German with no grasp of the English language. <laughs> As evidenced by the Germanic song he sings, and his apparent inability to understand when asked to desist. Oh my god. <laughs> So why is the man here at all, and in such apparently high spirits? The answer, of course, Iris, is clearly known to you. Indeed, we need only follow the gaze of those bright young eyes to unravel that particular part of the mystery. I think it's just that she broke the, uh... She broke the tea set, because the tea set was on the ground earlier. Or that the tea set got broken. The reason for the man's mildly irritating wobbling is revealed by the herbal tea. You obviously offered our German guest a cup of your latest herbal blend. The tea's delectable flavors made the man's spirit soar, and resulted in this joyful ditty tumbling, a tumbling incessantly from his lips. I eagerly await sampling of the flavor myself, that I may join the fellow in his state of elation. <laughs> Iris is here like, Hurley, shut the fuck up. Just let Runo take over. You're very clearly wrong about everything here. <laughs> now to the next question. Who exactly is the gentleman availing himself so thoroughly of the settee? Set T. I think. As it happens, a number of years ago now, 
A certain gentleman of German origin engaged, engaged my services in solving a particularly delicate case. He required the retrieval of letters once sent to an acquaintance that might have proved problematic. A scandal in Bohemia. I actually get that reference. <laughs> that is one of the very few Sherlock Holmes stories that I actually know, like, something about. In order to conceal his noble identity, he also arrived at my office in a mask. The gentleman's name was Wilhelm Gottschrich Sigmund, Sigmund von Ormstein. The King of Germany. <laughs> okay, that's... <laughs> That's especially funny because the kid that was like that name the second we had in a trial earlier as a witness and he's from Bohemia. <laughs> If my memory serves, the mask worn by this gentleman is identical. Yes, there can be no question. That mask belongs to the King of Germany. It would appear that His Majesty remembers the fine service I afforded him, and has decided to show his face again, mask and all, in order to express his gratitude. A well-mattered monarch, indeed. Wouldn't you agree, my dear fellow? <laughs> Iris, Iris, the, Iris off to the side is just like, I don't know why he's like this. So the identity of this masked visitor is in fact my former client, the King of Germany. Indeed, his son is currently in London as well, enjoying the wonders of the Great Exhibition. Which leaves us with one remaining remaining unponderable. Yes, you, young Iris. But your apparently inexplicable silence is unable to hide the truth. Yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that knapsack. <laughs> A five-pound note, I believe. I must say, as your compatriot, I'm deeply saddened. It would appear that you've been- that you've allowed yourself to be bribed into silence by His Royal Highness, earning yourself some spending money in exchange for keeping quiet about the King's secret. <laughs> and now, the final piece of the puzzle. What is this secret you strive to hide with your silence, Iris? Ah, yes. We need only follow that brief, involuntary twitch of your eyes to, fo to find the answer. You are attempting to abscond with the coffee cup. My favorite coffee cup, in fact. Or should I say, the handle of my favorite coffee cup. It appears that his high-spirited highness broke it in the midst of his hijinks. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for the big reveal as to why Iris is currently being mute to be either she like bit her tongue while she was eating something or she burnt her tongue while she was drinking tea. Which leads us to the sad truth. Don't worry, we're gonna go back through and fix them. My favorite coffee cup has been broken by the King of Germany, and Iris, you tried to conceal it from me. <laughs> I shall have a pill sent via governmental channels to the German royal family for its replacement. <laughs> I fucking love Schulbs, he's such a goofball. Thus concludes Herlock Schulbs' great deduction. ...of this painful puzzle.
Schwarzbierch gebot, modelnd wie ein Feuerberg. With your silence as well, the fellow's jovial warbling rather rings in the ears, does it not? Uh. Um, Mr. Sholmes, I must say something does rather trouble me. Pray, Miss Susato, do tell. His Royal Highness doesn't appear to have moved a muscle since we arrived. Ah. I haven't said a word either, Iris. Mr. Sholmes has it all right. You might as well own up to it now. Your reasoning isn't entirely without substance, I must admit. And one other thing, Mr. Sholmes. Yet another grievance, Mr. Notahodo. Surely not. Well, I actually read the story of that case recently. The one you were just describing. And according to that, at least, it wasn't the King of Germany. It was the King of Bohemia. Goodness, was it? Yes, that's quite true. Master Gotts, the prince, testified to that in court. In his words, I have come to see the Great Exhibition all the way from my home in Bohemia. I would ask you to keep that minor error to yourselves. It could easily become quite a scandal. I believe, Mr. Narahodo, that it's our turn now to make some corrections to a number of minor errors that might have slipped in. Yes, even Mr. Sholmes is willing to admit that he might be slightly wide of the mark this time. Although it's clear that Iris is definitely hiding something. We need to find out the truth behind this mysterious scene. But one truth is incontrovertible. My favorite coffee cup is no more. So, shall we embark again? On a joint presentation of Herlock Sholmes' Logic and Reasoning Spectacular? Also, can I just say, I really appreciated... I really appreciate that they made a version of the uh, Great Deduction scene with him in his casual clothes instead of in his detective's getup. Firstly, we concern... Er, firstly, we consider the gentleman's nationality. Clearly, he is a German with no grasp of the English language. As evidenced by the Germanic song he sings and his apparent inability to understand when asked to desist. So why is the man here at all? and in such apparently high spirits. The answer, of course, Iris, is clearly known to you. Indeed, we need only follow the gaze of those bright young eyes to unravel that particular part of this mystery. The reason for the man's mildly irritating warbling is revealed by the herbal tea. So what? Some mix of herbs that gives you the urge to sing? Goodness, I should like to try some. I'd like to hear your singing, but this man... So how long does he intend to keep up with that tune, do you suppose? As I said, he's been stock still the entire time. And if you look closely, his lips aren't moving either. Ah. <laughs> so I'm not sure what's actually responsible for the spirited singing. But I suspect the answer lies at the end of Iris's gaze. Wait, this is a gramophone. It's rare, or it's still rarely seen in our own country. The sound certainly appears to be coming from the horn. But machine singing? That that can't be right. Science and technology are changing the world rapidly, Mr. Narahodo. What's right is changing, too. Ugh. Too much for my brain. Well, at least we found our answer. Take that! I 
I do say, Mr. Sholmes, I do believe the main ingredient of this tea is opium. Reason for the men's mildly irritating warbling is revealed by the gramophone. Indeed, or no well-bred gentleman would break into an obscure folk song when making a social call. In other words, this gentleman isn't singing at all. In fact, it would appear that this fellow is unconscious. Ah, the music seems to have stopped now. I ask you, Mr. Natahodo. Yes? Why would I have purchased a recording of that gibberish? Should I know? <laughs> I love that the music cut out for that and then cut back in afterward. Well, never mind. On with the deduction. Who exactly is this gentleman availing himself so thoroughly on the, of the settee? As it happens, a number of years ago now, a certain gentleman of German origin engaged in my services in solving a particularly delicate case. He required the retrieval of letters once sent to an acquaintance that might have proved problematic. The original dick pic, if you would. In order to conceal his noble identity, he also arrived at my office in a mask. Hey, Taco, how are you doing? The gentleman's name was Wilhelm Gottschalk Sigmund von Ormstein. The King of Germany. Unironically, that's actually what that... That's actually what a scandal in Bohemia basically is. Is, uh... The whole reason that Sherlock Holmes gets called into that... Situation. Is that... He, the king is like, hey, uh, I sent compromising pictures of myself to this, uh, opera singer. I need you to get them back from me. <laughs> and it's also, uh, like, he, 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 uh, loses that battle of wits, like, actually. He doesn't manage to get him back at the end of that story. Because Irene Adler outsmarts him. The King of Germany. If my memory serves, the mask worn by this gentleman is identical. Yes, there can be no question. That mask belongs to the King of Germany. Although we've already established that it was actually the King of Bohemia. It seems Mr. Sholmes intends to persist with this Germany theory for some reason. What part are you- what part are you responding to, Sachi? Come to think of it, the young prince was wearing a mask as well, wasn't he? Master Gotts, the boy whom you had in tears. Don't remind me, or anyone else. Do you, er, do you suppose that all members of the aristocracy of mainland Europe wear masks? Sure they do. Well, probably, anyway. Have a good night, Mr. Shins. Well, if we, if we look at the character, it's very clearly, uh, Susato's dad, actually. Because of the tea. Well, I'm sure they do. Well, probably anyway. I think, unironically, I think this is... Okay. This has to be one of the most, like, far off the mark deductions that Shulms has ever made in one of these games. It's... It's a very close race to the bottom between this one and the anti-gravity device one in Drever's lab. Sure they do. Well, probably anyway. The point is, that mask doesn't belong to any king. No, that's... Uh, no, that's right. As we well know. 
because we can identify the true owner of this mask. Shomes missed the target by a country mile. Okay, I just had a really stupid thought. <laughs> uh, you know that absolutely infamous scene from BBC Sherlock? That's the, uh... It's basically a dance of deduction between, uh... Between Holmes and, uh... Uh, Irene Adler. Where, uh, they come to the conclusion that a boomerang did it out of absolutely nowhere. That, unironically, thinking about it, that scene from Sherlock feels like it could fit wholesale into this with no alterations. And it would have to be some shit that we have to correct because it's so far out of left field. <laughs> Take that! Yes, there can be no question. That mask belongs to Kazuma Asogi. I feel like I'm getting sidetracked a lot this stream, but <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> In other words, my memory is sublimely unreliable. <laughs> Only you could try to make that sound positive. Kazuma's mask has been languishing on this metal chest for several days. But that doesn't explain why the gentleman is wearing it now. It's the one where, like, the episode starts with, like, the guy out in the middle of, like, a th they go in to try to figure out the case about the guy that randomly died in the middle of a field with no evidence, and... They go through this whole, like, mind palace shit, imagining the crime happening, and they come to the conclusion that it was a boomerang. <laughs> it's like one of the few scenes from BBC's Sherlock that I've actually seen, and it's <laughs> absolutely ludicrous. Hey Steve, how are you doing? That doesn't explain why the gentleman is wearing it now. But it is now a simple matter to determine our guest's true identity. After all, the gentleman is unconscious. We need only excuse ourselves in advance. Gently lift the mask and peer beneath it. Yes, I'm talking about the... I'm, I'm talking about the Benedict Cumberbatch show. Benadryl Cucumber Man. Sorry, give me a sec. I... I don't believe it. Ah! Your father? I'm afraid, Miss Susato. No, I think not, Mr. Sholmes. Then it would appear our logic and reasoning has once again revealed the truth. <laughs> I love how, like... I tried to read that as fast as possible, but she cut him off so fast. Oh, wait, our pinned message went away. Whoops, I forgot to pin it for longer than 20 minutes. Then it would appear our logic and reasoning has once again revealed the truth. This mysterious visitor... is my unconscious father, Yujin Mikotoba. 
logic and reasoning, or just looking and saying. <laughs> Which leaves us with one remaining imponderable. Yes, you, young Iris. Sorry, give me a sec. so bad that like your whole body just like hurts afterward ow but a, but your apparently inexplicable silence is unable to hide the truth. Yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that knapsack. That's a five pound note sticking out from Iris's knapsack, is it? Oh dear, I can't be sure. Most money that we encounter is in coin form. No, not even sure if we've seen any banknotes here in Britain at all, have we? But anyway, Father would never have paid money for Iris's silence. Certainly seems like the silent type himself, though, judging by his present state. Must be some other reason for Iris's silence, I suppose. doing so good for like an hour and now my throat's trying to hurt me. Perhaps what Iris is trying so hard did not give away with her eyes is something entirely different. This metal chest, can, it contains important documents, doesn't it? <clears throat> yes, details of all the cases Mr. Sholmes has worked on over the years. Written up by Iris's father, if I'm remembering correctly. Iris insists that the, che that the chest is kept locked at all times. She's never once shown me inside. Well, its contents are invaluable to her, I suppose, and entirely irreplaceable. But look at it now. The catch is unlocked for once. Ah, so it is. That's hard to ignore. Very. I've never seen that chest unlocked before in all the time we've been staying here at Baker Street. Yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that metal chest. 
An excellent observation. For upon closer inspection, there is something different about the chest's appearance. It's kept locked at all times, yet now the catch is open. Evidently, this has something to do with your refusal to speak, Iris. Mm. But it's a simple enough matter to incite you to speak, I'm sure. I merely need to open this chest. Here we go. Mm. No! Early, don't! Mr. Sholmes? Mr. Sholmes! Early! <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> Never. Oh, Early. I told you not to open it. Ah, so you found your voice now, Iris. Yeah. In other words, what just happened clearly reveals the truth here. Early is fucking dead. <laughs> yes, the real reason for your silence until now is... This is somewhat different to the usual dance of deduction you perform with Mr. Sholmes, isn't it? Well, he's left me alone on the ballroom floor, so I'm gonna have to dance this next part solo. Anyway, I need to get to the bottom of this for my own peace of mind. <laughs> Now then, Iris isn't usually the silent type, so... You mean you don't actually know the answer yet? Despite that knowing... Er, despite that knowing point of the finger before. Miss Susato? Sometimes a man needs to point his finger first and think later. Oh, well, if you say so. I think we'd better examine Iris more closely, and try to rescue the situation then. Key she's holding. Look. I'm sure that wasn't in her hands before, was it? No, you're quite right. It's appeared as if by magic. That's strange. Big old iron key. Where did that materialize from? Take that! She had it in her mouth, didn't she? reason for your silence until now is that key behind your back. Uh. When Mr. Sholmes was thrown into the air before. Just before you called out to try to stop him, you slipped something out of your mouth. That something is the key now in your hands. No doubt the key to the chest. You're so... You're so clever, Runo. So now it becomes clear. Thanks to Mr. Sholmes' graphic demonstration, we can well imagine what happened here. B but... Professor Mikotoba also opened that metal chest, only to be punched into the air. Land sprawled it onto the settee. But wait, that doesn't explain all the facts. What about the stylish scarf, and the cup of tea, and above all, why would he be wearing Kazuma-sama's mask? Iris put the blanket on him. Well, for those curious details, I can think of only one explanation. Clearly an unbelievable miracle took place in this room. Isn't that right, Iris? Yeah, everything was already on top of that, so... Consider how the room was arranged before this whole painful experience took place. The blanket is the tablecloth, yeah. 
When Professor Mikotoba opened the chest, completely unaware of what awaited him inside, the mask was flung into the air just as he was, only to land neatly on his face when it fell back down. The teacup's journey through the air ended when it caught on the unconscious professor's finger. You... you mean to say that sky, that the stylish scarf... It's actually just a tablecloth. This is the great detective's office, after all. A place of miraculous deductions. <laughs> Would you expect anything less? Yes, you're right. It happened exactly as you said. You're brilliant, Runo. Thus concludes Ryanosuke Narahodo's great deduction of this punchy puzzle. And so then, why don't you make a fresh pot of tea for us all? Objection! Okay, I know that this is gonna sound really dumb. That was not Sholmes' voice. That was actually... <laughs> that wasn't Sholmes' voice. That was one of Kazuma's objection clips. Why did they use one of Kazuma's voice lines for that? An admirable performance, Mr. Narahodo. But in the final act of the show there, you rather missed everything of importance. Mr. Sholmes? If you would cast your mind back to my earlier deduction... Iris, clearly you're hiding a great secret. Uh. She is? Look on her face. Mr. Sholmes must be right, whatever that great secret is. Cat isn't out of the bag yet. So I put it to you again. You are attempting to abscond with that coffee cup. It really is a shame about Mr. Sholmes' cup. It must have been smashed when Professor Mikotobo opened the chest. Oh dear. And so many things seem to have been broken here. And now that the deduction has taken a different direction, Iris doesn't seem to be trying to hide the broken cup anymore. In other words, her great secret is something else. Let's put our observational skills to the work here one final time, then. Ah, look. There. There seem to be more papers there. Is Iris trying to hide them underneath the tray? The, the insignia, Mr. Narahodo. It's an official Scotland Yard document. What? But why would Iris have... We must ask her. An official Scotland Yard document. Take that! You are attempting to abscond with that case file. Iris, as you know very well, nothing escapes the attention of a great detective. Oh no. We visited Scotland Yard's autopsy laboratory earlier today. Dr. Gorey informed us that the autopsy report of Clint Van Zeeks had gone missing. Oh, I forgot about that. Clint Van Zeeks. Hmm. Yes, I do seem to recall. I still want that Plague Doctor plush on the shelf in the background. That some years ago, I asked to see the report in question. You were with me, weren't you, Iris? I... I... You mean... It was you, Iris? Those papers you have there are... I'm sorry. And forgive me!
Wow, they even went, like... It's crazy to me that they went the extra mile to do the, uh... The art for the, uh, Great Deduction stuff with him in his casual clothes. In truth... She's only ten. I would like to have thought I could have predicted the booby-trapped chest. But it caught me completely off guard. I was very neatly the late consulting detective, Herlock Sholmes. Or very nearly. Uh, I'm sorry, Hurley. So you mean, this autopsy report really is... Yes. I took it from the lab, even though I knew it was very important. Was there something in it that troubled you, Iris? Not exactly something that troubled me. And something I'd been looking for. When I saw this report, when I saw the writing in it, I knew it was Daddy's. The writing? Your father's writing. What do you really mean? Iris? Must be something that's hard for her to talk about. Forgive me for interrupting, my dear fellows. Mr. Sholmes, what is it? I feel as though the poor unconscious gentleman on the settee has been somewhat forgotten. Uh, father? Perhaps we should find our guest somewhere more peaceful to rest. Mr. Narahodo? Yes? Would you be so kind as to lend him your bed? We must do our very best to make him comfortable, I feel. Oh, yes, of course. I'll help you carry him up. And so will I. No, no, I can manage alone, thank you. You have tea to enjoy. We wouldn't want Iris's brew to stew. There's no better way to make the professor comfortable than dragging him upstairs like a trunk. I wonder. Perhaps that was deliberate. Maybe Mr. Sholmes is making himself scarce to give Iris the chance to talk more freely. We must use this opportunity to talk with- to talk with Iris. And find out what's going on. Would you like to tell us about it, Iris? About your father? I'm sure I told you before, didn't I? That Daddy used to be Hurley's partner. Yes. And that notes about all the cases they solved together are kept inside that metal chest. And that's right. Hurley told me, you see. He said that Daddy's somewhere far away now. So we can't meet. That's one way of describing it. And then, when I secretly unlocked the chest and read through the papers inside, I started to build up a picture in my head of what Daddy must be like. Well, that's only natural. You're just like any other girl of your age. I read that Daddy was a professor of medical science, so I studied and took a and took my degree too. Well, that's only natural, I suppose. It's really sad because, uh, her dad, as far as we are aware currently, was the victim in the first case of the first game. Well, it's only natural, I suppose. Also, she has a degree at 10. In that respect, you're not quite like any other girl of your age, though. But there was one thing that I could never find out. Daddy's name. Ah. His name wasn't anywhere on any of the notes that he'd made out in his work with Hurley. But then one day... That's what happened, is it? You saw this autopsy report, you finally managed to work it out. Is that right? 
Yes. So it was the handwriting in the report that caught her eye. They've been doing their damnedest to keep it a secret. Which, like, I commend them for. When I saw the writing on that report, I could hardly believe it. I know that handwriting, I thought to myself. It was the same as the writing you'd seen on your father's case notes. Exactly. I was desperate to compare the two properly. I needed to see them side by side. I asked the doctor in the laboratory, but I was told I couldn't take the report away. And even worse, I was told that it was the first and last time we'd be allowed to even look at it there. So you decided to steal it. When I compared the autopsy report with the case notes I had here, there was no doubt. The handwriting was exactly the same. It was Daddy's. And the signature of the coroner at the bottom of the autopsy report. Read Dr. John H. Wilson. And so that's how I finally found out. I learned Daddy's name at last. C. Ever since then, I've called myself Iris Wilson. And that's also when I had the brilliant idea of writing stories all about Daddy's exciting times with Hurley. I decided there and then that I'd write about the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Oh, Iris. I had no idea the stories had quite such a deep personal significance for you. I can see why the autopsy report was so important to her now. Why she was prepared to break the law to get her hands on it. I must apologize, Iris. This is really all my fault. Hurley? I made a promise, you see, that until the time was right, I'd keep the details about your father a secret. I know. I've been very naughty. I'll take the autopsy report back to Dr. Gori and apologize, I promise. Yes, we'll go together, I think. Then, let me look after it for you until we get there. I must go and water my herbs, I think. I'll see you all later. Poor Iris. She must be feeling awful. I know Mr. Sholmes is here for her, but still. Uh. Uh, how? What's the meaning of this, Mr. Sholmes? Mr. Sholmes? Oh dear me. So, you've noticed, I see. But... that... that would mean... What's the matter, Miss Susato? You've turned as white as a sheet. It's this autopsy report, Mr. Natahodo. The one from ten years ago. The writing. Isn't Dr. Wilson's at all. Huh? What do you mean? 
How could you possibly know that? Because I know his writing very well. This writing is, it's my father's. <laughs> what? Professor Mikotoba's? Indeed, it's true. And now you know, my dear fellows. N no, I don't know anything. What on earth does all this mean, Mr. Sholmes? It's the idea that's slowly forming in my mind. It's just too extraordinary to believe. Please, you have to explain. So, this autopsy report was actually penned by Professor Mikotoba then? It makes no sense. It's not possible, surely. Not possible. My dear fellow, pray take a deep breath and think again. Yes, you're right. In some ways, it actually makes a great deal of sense. It... it does? And ten years ago is when Father returned to Japan after his extended study tour in Britain. And prior to his return, where was Dr. Mikotoba engaged? Ah, of course. He was an assistant in Dr. Wilson's laboratory learning about forensic science. And as an assistant, he would have aided with the dissection work, making detailed notes, for which would be assembled into the full autopsy report. Once the work was complete, the head coroner would check the contents and put his signature on the document. In other words, the only writing of Dr. Wilson's in the report would be its, his signature at the end. See, so Iris got the wrong end of the stick, you mean? She saw that and assumed the whole report had been written by J Dr. John H. Wilson. Which is very understandable, of course. A complicated situation. Thinking about it. Most of what we know about you, Mr. Sholmes, comes from the published stories of your exploits. Yes, The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, written by Iris. You really have no way of knowing what's fact and what's fiction. Most troubling for you, my dear fellow, I'm sure. So what about this supposed partner of yours? Did he really exist or not? Ah, you've come straight to the point, I see. And please come straight to the answer. I believe Iris explained it in one of her installments. He was a trusted comrade and the only person I could truly have called a friend. And did this partner of yours truly make a record of all your cases? Are his notes really stored inside that metal chest? Absolutely, my dear madame. Absolutely. So, where's your partner now? We rarely meet. You see, he lives on the other side of the world. But if this autopsy report and the records about all your old cases were penned by the same hand, if the autopsy report was written, not signed by your famous partner, there would be only one logical conclusion. Pray, impress me. Your partner would have to be Yujin Mikotoba. In other words, Miss Susato's father. Upon my word, Mr. Narahodo. Yes? You are coming along wonderfully. You've hit upon the method at last. You've finally grasped the art of deduction. Y you mean to say... 
Allow me to introduce you. To my great friend and partner, Mikotoba. Professor Mikotoba! <laughs> wow. D does this mean that you're the real Dr. Wilson? Oh no, my dear, I'm still my old self, Eugene Mikotoba, your father. Oh, of course. This is obviously too much for Susaro-san to take in. Must say, though, my old friend has attained worldwide celebrity. The great mystery solver is the greatest mystery of all. I still remember the first time we met. Ah, pray remind me, when was it again, Mikotova? Sixteen years ago, Sholmes. Ah, yes, quite. Sixteen years ago. Just arrived from Japan with Seishiro and Genshin. I was in search of lodgings close to the hospital, some comfortable rooms at a reasonable price. But rents are devilishly high in that particular area. That's right. I decided I needed someone to share my lodgings and the expense. I was fortunate enough to be introduced to Sholmes, who found himself in a similar situation. I was a Kello fellow back then, a mere shadow of the great detective you see before you now. I was working at the hospital's chemical laboratory at the time, indulging my curiosities for a little gain. The situation of our cohabitation led to us pursuing cases together, you see. Hard to believe, it was a mere six years, and a great many adventures. But in the last year of Mikotoba's stay in Britain, that most infamous cases uh, that most infamous of cases presented itself. The case with which you've become rather familiar yourselves. The Professor Killings. Trial, Seshiro and I were summoned back home. Hardly surprising, given the circumstances. So there you have it. As you know, all the details recorded by my trusty chronicler remain in that metal chest. This is just amazing. This also explains why Mikotoba had a copy of Hound of the Baskervilles when the Quote unquote, only known copy was in the vault at the uh, pawnbroker. Professor Mikotoba really is Mr. Sholmes' famous partner. Father. Goodness, my dear. What a cutting look. As your daughter, I'm very proud to learn that you are a great detective's great partner. But nevertheless, there's another mystery that I really must ask you to explain now. And that is? You know very well what that is. The unresolved matter of Iris's father. Ah, of course, I'd almost forgotten about that one. Should have seen this coming, I suppose. Iris told us that all the notes about the great detective's adventures that are in that metal chest were written by her father. Isn't that correct, Mr. Sholmes? That is indeed what I told young Iris. But if you're Mr. Sholmes' partner, Father, and you wrote all of those case notes, then Iris' father must be you. Ugh. Upon my word, Miss Susato, you are coming along wonderfully as well. You too have hit upon the method at last. You finally grasped the art of deduction. Wha 
What you've always told me, father, is that my mother died when I was born 16 years ago. And you left me in grandmother's care whilst you embarked on your study tour in Britain. And I've always accepted that. But... All of this about Iris... Oh, there it is. Susato-san's ice-cold stare. No, no, hold on a minute. It's very complicated. I mean, it's, it's really not what you think. And then perhaps you'd like to explain exactly what it is. It is. The eyes go from ice cold to red hot, just before she... Oh, really? But the wrong end of the stick. Show him say something, man. That's quite enough, my fiery fellows. M Mr. Sholmes, and did he get all dressed up? Whilst I don't like to interrupt this exciting exploration of the past. Mikotoba and I have an, have an urgent matter that requires a short excursion. But it's very late, Mr. Sholmes. Where must you go? Why, my dear madam, is that not obvious? My partner and I must pursue our natural enemies. So, get your coat, Mikotoba. The game is afoot. Cholms. I must give Susato a full explanation, I think. Later, my dear fellow, later. Our carriage awaits downstairs already. Changed one iota, have you? I mean, really, I was in our home after ten long years. When I open that chest in a fit of nostalgia, I quite inexplicably pass out. As if that weren't enough, I eventually regain consciousness and plunge straight into all this. Father, please. Go with Mr. Sholmes now. What? I've no doubt that whatever happened, you are acting in everyone's best interests. I trust you. Completely. Susato. And sending the great detective and his great partner off on a renewed adventures together... ...is more than I could have ever hoped for in my wildest dreams. Well then, we'll speak again later. So, I believe your own work is done for the day. I wish you the best of luck for tomorrow. Yes, Naruhodo, good luck in battle. Reaching a decision. Decision? Whether I go back to Japan, I suppose. Yeah, same. So much happened that day that I barely knew what to do with myself. It would only be later that I'd come to realize how amidst the chaos I'd unleashed were all the clues I needed to finally unearth the truth and that all the turmoil was necessary to give me the resolve to see everything through. He said the thing, he said resolve. That's the name of the game, the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. So, real quick, before we start the trial, I'm gonna hit you with a quick BRB. I should be back in just a moment.
<sighs> oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Oh shit, that was the end of the... That was the end of that case. I didn't catch it. I thought it said to be continued. So, the time's finally come. Remixed version of the, uh, music. We probably are. It's just probably going to be after the trial's done, or it's going to be a topic that comes up in the trial that we need to solve. So, the time's finally come. Today, we unravel everything. I'll be counting on your support more than ever today, Miss Susato. Um, Miss Susato? <laughs> oh no! What's the matter, Mr. Narahodo? Um, nothing? Just saying that I'd be relying on your support today, but... I'm so sorry. Of course, I... I... I know I can be rather incompetent at times, but... I shan't let you down. Do you mind helping me to my feet, then? Oh dear. I'm really very sorry. I swear, my room can't decide if it wants to be scalding hot or absolutely freezing cold. Susato-san isn't her usual self at all. That's hardly surprising, I suppose. She's just found out that her father is the partner of a world-famous detective. Not to mention... Ah, good morning, sir. Lord Van Zeeks. Thank you for all your efforts yesterday. What? Did I hear that correctly? What? Oh, um, no, nothing. Just, I hope we can clear things up today. I really can't make this man out. His face says I hate you, but his words are almost jovial today. In fact, he hasn't been very Reaper-like at all since this all began yesterday. Lord Van Zeeks isn't the Reaper, Mr. Nadhodo. Good point. Reaper? I suppose in hindsight, I shouldn't have allowed that misconception to go unchallenged. Huh? It was my tacit acceptance of that pseudonym. My failure to stop the Reaper becoming something more than a mere legend that led to all this. But you're not to blame for that, Lord Van Zeeks. It's only because serious crime in the capital dropped off so sharply when the public started calling you that. That's why you didn't say anything, isn't it? Hey, Frank. I'm not sure that was the sole reason. What do you mean? <clears throat> there was a rumor at the time that the Reaper was really the ghost of my late brother. That having been slain by that evil killer, Lint's restless spirit returned as some sort of demigod. Build a deadly blade of justice where I, by dint of the law, could not. Yes, we've heard that story too. When I lost him, I felt as though I'd lost my guiding light. I didn't know where to go or what to do. So, in some small way, I wonder if perhaps those rumors made me feel his absence a little less keenly. He 
even if I knew it was just an illusion. Just some nonsense conjured by an over-imaginative public. <clears throat> he was obviously extremely important to you. Lord Clint Van Zeeks. There's some pretty serious psychological trauma happening in this game, especially in um the first Ace Attorney game. Like one, three, and five all have some really fucked up stuff happening to some of the main characters. Never actually played one. I unironically even though you're watching this and uh, getting spoiled on it as we go, I highly recommend, if you like this type of writing, pick up the Ace Attorney trilogy. Ace Attorney and psychological trauma go together like peanut butter and jelly. Like, yeah, if, if you like the writing style of this, pick up the Ace Attorney trilogy and give it a shot, like, genuinely. Just make sure that it's the original trilogy, because you want to start with 1, 2, and 3 instead of starting with the Apollo trilogy that's 4, 5, and 6. It, at the very least, uh, the fourth game kind of relies on a bit of... It's kind of a new starting point, but not sure it's your sort of game. I think that these games make fantastic background noise for, like, if you're working on a project. You get you get a streamer to, like, read out all of the dialogue, and it's just, mm. Well, what's important now is uncovering the truth. That's all that matters. I... I know that you didn't take anyone's life. And I intend to prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt in court today. I never thought I'd say this, but I can see it in your eyes. That burning desire to cut through all the lies and deception. I can't deny it any longer. You are a lawyer of absolute integrity. Thank you. Now tell me, why do I detect the scent of expensive tea leaves in the air? Oh, Iris, when did you get here? Oh. Uh, um. I brought you one of my special blends. Hurley loves it. it. Says it helps him to clear his head. I thank you. Oh. <laughs> Surely the first and last time I'll ever see a sight like this. You seem different today, Iris. Oh? Sort of subdued, I suppose. I am not. What happened yesterday is obviously still playing on her mind a lot. She's clearly very troubled about having stolen that autopsy report from Dr. Scythe's laboratory. Alright then. Good luck to you both. I have to make a move now. Oh, you're not staying? I thought you'd want to watch today's proceedings. Well, I'd like to cheer you on, obviously. But I've got lots to get ready. Get ready? For what? Oh, yes. Would you take this? Is that one of the little felt dolls that's usually dangling from your knapsack? Thank you for the cheer, Lobster. I appreciate it. Yes, it's a lucky charm. A little Hurley that I made once. A Hurley? It's more like a Hairly to me. If for some reason you completely run out of options in the trial today, then just pull this little Hurley's ears as hard as you possibly can. Wh pull his ears? That's right. It's a way to bring good luck. I think you might need it. You think that we'll need this luck? Or 
you think that what we'll need is luck? I just need to beat a peek inside the courtroom. And it seemed very different to normal. Yes, it would seem that a certain someone has decided to pull out all the stops. What does that mean? What about Mr. Sholmes, Iris? I don't know. He was out all night and he hasn't come home by the time I left this morning. Oh, I see. Was Professor Mikotoba out all night too, do you think, Ms. Susato? Yes, it would seem so. I telegrammed the hotel this morning. They went out drinking? Yeah, more or less. <clears throat> and apparently they didn't come back to their rooms last night at all. They? And Father and Judge Jikoku, I mean. Judge Jikoku, too? That's right. Nobody appears to have seen either of them since yesterday. That's for the defense and the defendant. Court is about to be in session. Please make your way inside the courtroom at once. Good luck then, Bruno. Good luck, Susie. Yes, thanks, Iris. And you, Mr. Reaper. I hope it goes well. Once again, I thank you for the delicious tea. It was very soothing. Oh, I'm so glad. We must go inside now, Lord Van Zeeks. Hmm. Lord Van Zeeks has always been the formidable prosecutor I've had to lock horns with in court. But not today. Today I battle with another in pursuit of the truth. My best friend, Kazuma Asogi, who I trust more than anyone else in the world. Now I understand what it was that drew me here to Britain all those months ago. Now I know exactly what destiny had in store for me. It's all been leading up to this... to this one day. To this one trial. To this one final reckoning. Also, completely, like... We're definitely going to be taking a break from Ace Attorney for a little bit after this. But I am very excited to start getting into the Apollo trilogy of games. I am especially excited for Dual Destinies because Dual Destinies has one of my favorite characters in it. She may be a little bit flat, but... Just a little bit. Only a little bit. Feels even more oppressive here than it did yesterday. There are cold stares piercing me like knives from all sides today. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Natahoto, look. L Lord Strongheart. Kazuma must have known beforehand. The ramifications of this trial now extend far beyond the murder of one Scotland Yard inspector. In fact, events have come to light that threaten to rock the very foundations of our country's legal system. The escape of a condemned criminal on the night of his execution, the subsequent unlawful shooting of, him, of the man, and the revelation that prison staff must have been complicit in the jailbreak is currently hosting influential members of the judiciary from countries all over the world. It's imperative that we uncover the truth in these proceedings to avoid international embarrassment. By royal decree, this will come to er, this will continue to be a closed trial. One over which I, male Strongheart, exercise total and unequivocal authority. Th 
six jurors' flames just... As was the case in yesterday's proceedings, those here present in the public gallery are distinguished members of our judiciary, assembled to bear witness to a fair judicial process. In other words, a collection of your acolytes, Lord Strongheart. On a personal note, I find it most distressing, Lord Van Zeeks. You were a prosecutor of exceptional talent. <clears throat> Much like your brother Clint, in fact. I really hope that we get to take him down a peg. He really deserves it. <clears throat> in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. For the trial of Barak Van Zeeks, who officially stands accused of murder. Counsels for the prosecution and defense, are you in full readiness to proceed? Defense is ready, my lord. As is the prosecution. Yesterday's proceedings brought to light a shocking and disturbing fact. There was a side to the victim, Inspector Tobias Gregson, that was unknown to his supporters at Scotland Yard. Yes, he was carrying out operations in secret, which Scotland Yard knew nothing about. In those clandestine operations, he had an accomplice. Mr. Daly Vigil will be given the inspector's identification and present himself about the capital in order to establish credible alibis for Gregson. In that way, Gregson appeared to be carrying out his regular Scotland Yard work when in fact he wasn't. At the end of yesterday's session, Mr. Vigil, who had been suffering from amnesia, regained his memory. Here he buried his memories of the time deep inside himself as a means of self-preservation. <clears throat> because while he was engaged as Chief Warder at Barclay Prison, he abetted the convict's escape. Mr. Vigil is currently recuperating at St. Sinners. He's recovered enough to give a signed statement about his movements the day prior to the incident. He's formally admitted to posing as Gregson whilst investigating the redheaded. Oh gosh. Which brings us to the crucial issue of the victim's time of death. The defense yesterday proposed a suggestion that the victim may have been killed one day earlier. This was based largely on the discovery of the victim's pocket watch had not... had not been wound. The prosecution has something to report on that subject, my lord. Really? Go ahead, Prosecutor Osoki. Gosh, this is gonna wear me out really quickly. <clears throat> I met once again with the coroner yesterday to discuss the issue. She confirmed that, that the defense's suggestion could not be ruled out. It's entirely possible that Inspector Gregson was killed on the 31st of October, the day before his body was discovered. He did the thing! I, I was taking a sip of water. He did the thing. He updated the autopsy report. I have here an updated autopsy report that includes the amended details. Gina's salary, no! <laughs> The official opinion of the investigation team was made clear yesterday. 
at the time of death was 5 p.m. on the 1st of November. There are indications of an attempt to disguise the real time of death, however. It seems that the natural decaying process of the victim's body may have been slowed by keeping it chilled. That's out of the question. There are no refrigeration devices in that part of London large enough to accommodate a human corpse. My lord, this is more than just conjecture. There's evidence to support the idea. We must investigate it thoroughly. Very well. The court will accept the new report as evidence. However, if this updated report is deemed to be accurate, would give renewed significance to the movement of the victims the day before the Fresno Street incident. It would, yes. Especially since on that day... Inspector Gregson was using Mr. Vigil to cover up his real movements. It's conceivable that he was killed in the course of his secret activities. I sense the prosecution has some information regarding those activities. Scotland Yard put an enormous effort into investigating that precise matter today. I think we should begin by presenting the results of that investigation work. So the prosecution calls its first witness now. State your name and occupation for the court. Inspector Gina Lestrade, reporting. Reaper sensitive of Scotland Yard. Self-conferred rank, but never mind. Gina? Again? What's your problem, Odo? What's with that Gina, again, look, eh? Ugh. The boss meant the world to me. He done more for me than anyone else ever did. Oh, Inspector Gregson, you mean. He got me out of the back slums of the East End, and took me under his wing. Taught me that life can have a purpose. So that's why I'm the best person to be standing here speaking for him. Oh, Gina. Right, all out of the goodness of Gregson's heart. Not at all that he had his arm twisted by Mr. Sholmes, no. What's relevant to these proceedings is the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigation yet investigations yesterday. It has revealed that the victim was carrying out some assignment the police knew nothing about. Very troubling. That face. Lord Strongheart knew. So, Inspector Lestrade. Let's hear exactly what it says in that report. Coming right up, sir. Yeah, I feel really bad for Gina in this. Like, she got, she got like a mentor that she somewhat, res somewhat respected, and then he, like, he died like very shortly after, and now it's, uh, and now all of this horrible shit is coming out about him. All your detectives are supposed to follow orders and investigate what they're told. But a little search of the boss's office turned up a notebook that had a load of secret meetings in it. According to that, the boss was looking into some smuggled goods dealings that day. It looks like it was a big job and all, but the coppers weren't onto it yet. What matters most is, there's witnesses what saw the Reaper in that place, too. Smuggled goods? I don't know, do I? I'm just, I'm just telling you what was written in the book. Tobacco, tea, spices, medicines. Goods of all sorts flow into London by illegal channels from across the globe. It's well known that they're disposed of at regular black markets and take, that take place in the capital. But the police are rarely able to locate them in time. 
So Inspector Gregson was investigating one of those black markets? It's been suggested that a high-ranking government official may be involved in black market activity. No doubt Gregson was trying to avoid details of his investigations being leaked into the involved parties. That would explain why he was operating on his own authority without the Yard's knowledge. Do we know where the dealings were taking place at, at this time? A particular room of a certain exclusive London gentleman's club. The day in question. The accused is known to have been there. That's the conclusion of Scotland Yard's investigation into the matter. It can't be. We haven't heard anything about any of this. Members of the club have testified to it. No question. The accused, Barak Van Zeeks, was present. That would be very significant testimony. Oh my, but, but... Lord Van Zeeks has made no mention of this at all. In short, Lord Van Zeeks had ample opportunity to murder the victim. Very well then, Council for Earth. Counts for the defense. Begin your cross-examination. All your detectives are supposed to follow orders and investigate what they're told. Hold it! So, you follow orders, do you, Gina? <laughs> wow, that is a backhanded statement. <laughs> nah, not me. I'm above all that, see? Oh. The boss always had special orders for me. Grab us some fish and chips, or go and give Toby his grub. That kind of thing. So, errands more than orders, then. This detective is still an apprentice, after all. Yeah, well, this apprentice ain't one to sit around and wait to be told what to do. Even by the boss. That's why I've been doing my own investigations into what happened. Didn't find much at first. But a little search of the boss's office turned up a notebook that had a load of secret meetings in it. Oh, whoops. Hold it! So you went through Inspector Gregson's things. Yep, as part of the independent Lestrade investigation. I'm sure your superiors would be delighted that you're taking the initiative. <laughs> and so I snuck into his office when no one when no one else was about. Because if anyone at the yard had seen me going in there, they'd have turned me straight out onto the street. Sounding less and less like an investigation and more and more like something else. Odo, I got Iris's help to plant a pipe bomb in Gregson's desk. So that whenever the other investigators come, they get blown to smithereens. It's a foolproof plan, ain't it? Prosecution understands that it was this very detective who discovered the notebook. You got that right. Nothing gets past Inspector Lestrade and her trusty assistant, Chief Inspector Toby. We found it in and in his desk drawers. They're at a false bottom. That's... Impressive. So then I went to hide myself when where no one could find me. So I could have a butchers at what was written in it. Because if anyone at the yard had found me out, they'd have tuffed me straight out onto the street. <sighs> I've given it in now though, ain't I? And if it weren't for me, it never would have been found. According to that, the boss was looking into some smuggled goods dealings that day. Hold it! Do you have any idea where those dealings were taking place? Yep. It was all there on the boss's notes. Let's see if I can remember. Uh... As I already said, the illegal dealings were due to take place at a gentleman's club. Yes, I remember. But I was hoping to find out the name of the club. That won't be necessary. What? It's conceivable that the club might be used again by the smugglers in the future. 
Therefore, the prosecution has been asked not to reveal the name in these proceedings. I don't know what all this fuss is about. It's right here. All I've got to do is read it out. And I could, too. I got this reading game buttoned up now. Can I show you what I can do? Go on, what's the arm? Judge hasn't signaled his objection yet. Try to find out. What should I do? This is a closed court. The proceedings are confidential. There shouldn't be any possibility of the information being leaked. As I explained, there's some possibility of politicians being involved in this affair. The prosecution is right rightfully exercising caution, I imagine. No, my lord. The prosecution has no objection. That scowl. That was like... That wasn't just like his normal resting bitch face. That was a scowl. Kazuma? There's no question that Inspector Gregson was looking into these black market dealings. However, it's not yet been established that he was on that particular trail on the day in question. If the defense requires er, requires to know the club's name, the prosecution has no intention of being obstructive. No, Strongheart's probably the one doing the bribing, is my thought. Is that this probably all leads back to him, and he's trying to cover his tracks by actively obstructing us. Rather than passively obstructing us like he has been in the past. Right then. I get to show off my reading skills. Apparently, the Samago Goods deal is gonna happen at the Gentleman's Club, club, uh, club called the Groose. Hold it! Where have we heard that before? We've heard that before. The Groose? What sort of a club is that? It's a club for guys with flaming red hair and big pompadours. I ain't got the foggiest. Clubs ain't exactly my thing. But I am kind of curious. They're not places where, fo where a foreign student like you would readily be admitted. You looked in the mirror recently? I tell you what. Me and Chief Inspector Toby could go in undercover. Did you, though? I could pick out a few good marks and see what else I could find while I was in there. I really don't think you should go picking out anything. Anyway, that's where these black market dealings were going to take place, is it? Yeah, it's gotta be. That's what the lower-ranking detectives at the yard reckon. It's the even lower-ranking detective. It looks like it was a big job and all, but the coppers weren't onto it yet. Hold it! So how would Inspector Gregson come to find out about it in that case? Actually, wait. Where have we heard the name of the gr Grouse, Gross, Gross, the Grusinator? Where have we heard that before? And there are details of a whole raft of cases dating back years on here, aren't there? This paper from ten years ago is browning from age, look. Out of interest, the most recent thing here appears to be this newspaper cutting here. Oh, same redheaded leg, do you remember? Hairpiece. Why was that unchecked? version of Mr. Sholmes. Do you suppose this is how Iris sees him? Are you 
all right, Mr. Natahoto. Your eyes are veritably boring into the poor doll's ears. Oh, sorry. I was just wondering. What do you suppose would happen if we were to tug its ears with all my might right now? I'm sure we'll find out when the time is right. To become a proper gentleman, you must really learn stoic patience. I want to know. Knowing Iris and Sholmes, she's probably hid evidence in here. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're basically gonna rip the doll open and, uh, it's gonna have some piece of crucial evidence. What about the advert? The advert is only for the Red-Headed League stuff. So how would Inspector Gregson come to find out about it in that case? That's the question, ain't it? But I'm just an apprentice, so... Why didn't he inform Scotland Yard of his findings? Yeah, that's what I was asking myself. Because, you know, I'm just an apprentice. When it suits you, yes. Anyway, the point is, something went on at the club, no question. Can't say that for certain, though, surely. What matters most is that... Is this witness is what saw the Reaper at the place, too. Oh, whoops. So that's all I've got to work with. Hina's not holding back with that ice-cold stare of hers, is she? I really don't know what to make of all this. Red Van Zeeks told us that he was investigating Inspector Gregson. But he never once mentioned that he met the inspector the day before the incident. You don't think Lord Van Zeeks could have been lying to us, do you? It's not the only way to explain this. Oh. Everything Lord Van Zeeks has told us is true. And there must be a mistake in this testimony somewhere. You mean, there are details we've yet to uncover? Exactly. A clue, perhaps, that even Gina hasn't noticed. That's what we should be looking for here. What matters most is that Witness saw the Reaper at the place, too. Lord Van Zeeks was at the club. He was. Detectives who visited the club yesterday to make inquiries have confirmed it. Several members report having seen the accused being admitted to the room in question as a guest. Looks like there's no disputing that he was there, then. Well, we know that Lord Van Zeeks was investigating Inspector Gregson, don't we? Perhaps he had already discovered the Inspector's secret notebook. To let him to the club, you mean? Maybe. Presumably, then, there are also eyewitnesses who can testify that Gregson was there? None have been identified at this time, no. So the all-important victim wasn't seen at this mysterious club. Boy, why aren't you asking Inspector Lestradia, eh? all I've got to work with. Okay, so, um... about these clubs that exist here in Britain. 
As I understand it, they're places where well-to-do gentlemen socialize with friends and colleagues. I don't, ima or don't imagine for a second that a foreign student like you would be admitted. Seriously, is your mirror cracked or something? We do know for sure that the, the, the contraband dealings were definitely happening at a club called The Grouse. Or Grouse. Police are currently looking for evidence, but haven't found anything definitive yet. And I'm sorry to say that they probably won't. What do you mean by that? I mean, the place Inspector Gregson was secretly going to visit on the 31st of October may not have been a gentleman's club at all. You're showing a very irreverent attitude between Order our country's police there, Council. If it wasn't a gentleman's club, then what was it? A steamship. You think it's a ship. I have the evidence to prove it. Here. Let me see that. This dark-suited young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. Ah, um, the other side, my lord. Be more specific next time. Ah, uh, this would appear to be a ticket for passage upon a steamship, yes. The SS Gru. Bruce Grouse. Cross is lost. Objection! This is a steamship named the Grouse that happens to share a name with the club. What I'm afraid to say is a flaw in your logic there. How? Look at the ticket. Notice the date of arrival in port. The ship arrived at the port of Dover on the 1st of November. Ugh. The day on which the sound like a gunshot was heard in Fresno Street. In other words, on the day in question here, 31st of October, when the victim was on his clandestine mission, that steamship hadn't yet docked on British shores. It would certainly make an undercover investigation somewhat challenging. Objection! The fact that the steamship hadn't yet reached Britain substantiates the defense's assertion that the victim was investigating the SS Grouse on the day in question. Then show your evidence for that assertion. Very well. In that case, counsel for the defense, Present your evidence to the court now. Evidence that substantiates your claim that the victim was investigating the SS Grouse on th the 31st of October. Take that! What's this? Passport for travel issued for to the victim. Dated the 31st of October. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that just one day before the inspector's body was discovered, there's a distinct possibility he wasn't even in the country. Order, order. This document is for passage to France. It does appear to have been officially authorized. The day before the SS Grouse arrived at Dover, it docked on the northern coast of France for a night. According to my father, who was on board, at the port of Dunkirk. Dunkirk, France. What could possibly have taken the victim there? <laughs> I'm impressed, Ryunosuke Narahodo. I certainly didn't expect you to get your hands on that passport. What? You mean, you knew about this? Prosecution's strategy for this trial has been laid down by the Crown Prosecution Office. <clears throat> on the day before the incident, the victim was investigating contraband dealings at, London, at a London club. That's the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigations and the line the prosecution has been asked to follow. 
personally, I don't agree. I think pros I think the prosecutor's office is trying to hide something. What? Now that you've expertly disproven their assertion, I intend to reveal what I believe that something to be. What are you playing at, Prosecutor Asogi? Courtroom is a forum for the truth, my lord. Which is why it's my duty to present all the facts without exception. Let me guess. This was your intention from the outset, wasn't it? The reason Inspector Gregson secretly made his way into the steamship docked in France on the day in question was to carry out a mission for the Reaper. Th the Reaper? Order! Order! What on earth are you saying, Council? The prosecution made an assertion in court yesterday. Inspector Gregson was investigating the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret hideout, he was killed. As I'm sure everyone can imagine, by the Reaper's hand. But in reality, the truth is the opposite of that. What? Inspector Gregson wasn't investigating the Reaper at all. He was, in fact, acting for the Reaper. So, you're saying the mission he was undertaking was... Obviously. An assassination. Beric Van Zeeks neither or never carried out any of the actual killings. Whenever the Reaper's victims lost their lives, he always had a cast iron alibi. Which tells us that he must have had an accomplice. You claim that it was Inspector Gregson. What, what the hell do you think you're saying, eh? My boss would never have done nothing like that. And yet, when you consider all the facts, it all makes perfect sense. No, it, it can't be. We also arrived at the same conclusion, didn't we? That Inspector Gregson was operating as the Reaper. And so, there's no way that the person giving him his orders... Lord Van Zeeks. No, the true Reaper is somebody else. Beric Van Zeeks is not the Reaper. Predictable response from someone who's advocating for the man. And even if it's true that Gregson was operating as an agent of the Reaper, the suggestion that he was that he went aboard the SS Grouse on an assassination mission doesn't follow at all. Oh? You have some solid reason for doubting the assertion, do you, Council? Absolutely. It's very simple. On the day in question, nobody was killed aboard that steamship. Mr. Mikotoba and Judge Jakoku were on that very ship. If someone had been assassinated, I'm sure we would have heard about it. Pfft. What's so funny? You're right, of course. No suspicious deaths were reported abo on board the ship. But I think perhaps you've missed the point. That's precisely why Inspector Gregson himself lost his life. What? Gregson did board the SS Grouse that night, with the intention of dispatching his mark. But his mission ended in failure. Failure? It seems that the defense hasn't yet grasped a very important detail here. What are you talking about? What detail? Inspector Gina Lestrade. Eh, what? Victim's notebook that you read an excerpt from earlier. That doesn't contain details of secret investigations at all. It's 
describes ten years of assassination plots to be carried out by the Reaper of the Bailey. You're lying. Even if all them bludges what taken what got taken out at it coming. The boss want the Reaper. Poor Gina. There's no question that Tobias Gregson was heavily involved in the Reaper's activities. You may just be an apprentice, but if you spent any time at Scotland Yard, you must have heard the rumors. I ain't heard nothing, and I don't believe a word of it. Then testify again, as a representative of Scotland Yard. Consider it your chance to defend your boss. I... I don't... I concur. The witness will give a new formal testimony. Miss Lestrade, you will tell the court everything you know about Inspector Gregson's secret notebook. It's where he writes all of his fanfiction. I didn't want to reveal it to the court, because I didn't want to sully the boss's name. Yeah, this notebook does have a load of stuff about what the Reaper got up to these past ten years. Names of the victims, dates and places and stuff. And the last entry there was the 31st of October. And said Grouse for the place and the date. Then in the name of the mark. There was a note about him being a criminal what got away from the Reaper in court ten years ago or something. But honest, the boss didn't do none of it. He... He was just investigating the Reaper, that's all. Gregson wrote Van Zeeks in Hairbrain fanfic. Keep personal opinion out of your testimony, witness. We require only established fact here. This must be so hard for her. You can't deny it now, surely, Ryanosuke Narahodo. What can't I deny? Clearly, you don't know the depths of depravity that I will fall into to, in order to prove someone not guilty. I will deny any truth. <sighs> Including the fact that McGilded, uh... I, I denied the fact that McGilded was guilty. Notebook contained the name of the final mark and the location where the assassination would take place. That's information the victim could have only known if he was working with the Reaper. Ah. So, who was to be this final mark? Go ahead, Inspector Lestrade. L read the name for the court. The name that's written alongside the entry that mentions the Grouse on the 31st of October. Eh. Oh, um... How do you read this, then? Ying's still not her strong suit. That ain't the problem, all right, Odo? It's a funny name. It ain't English. It's odd to read. So it's someone from overseas. Let me have a bash at it. se chi -ro. Is it? Yeah, se chi -ro. jig o -kyu. Maybe? What? It, it can't be. Seishiro Jigoku? But that's... Judge Jikoku. Seishiro Jikoku. Certainly not an English name, you're right. Objection! That can't be right. I know Judge, J Judge Jikoku. And I saw him the day before yesterday here in London. So I know for a fact that the man hasn't been assassinated. We actually haven't heard anything about his, uh... We actually don't know if that's okay. He didn't return to his hotel room last night. As I said, the Reaper failed. Oh. Gregson missed his chance to kill his mark and return to British shores. The Reaper wouldn't tolerate the mistake. So we killed the inspector, personally. The Reaper of the Reaper, of course, being the accused, Eric von Zeeks. The 
It's an undeniably logical argument. Kazuma, you planned for the trial to go this way all along, didn't you? Hold it! <laughs> I took- I took a sip of water and I wasn't expecting a random boot slam out of nowhere. <laughs> Aha! I got like water in my nose! Ah! <clears throat> also, this is a good line. Pray forgive the discourtesy of filling my hallowed chalice whilst I stand accused of murder. L Lord Van Zeeks! The accused has no right to speak uninvited in court. You will return to the dock. I say nothing of whether or not I am the Reaper. That is the task of this court to decide. But there is one thing I can say unequivocally. That girl is no detective. Eh? What? Nah, that's right, I ain't. I'm an inspector. Repeating rumors heard around the yard. Reading entries from a notebook of unconfirmed origin. That's not testimony. It's practically a script. No doubt the rest of this trial will go exactly as you've clearly planned. Your hatred of me is understandable. In your mind, I'm sure, I'm the Reaper. You sent your father to the gallows all those years ago. But you're in danger of becoming a far more sinister Reaper yourself. By attempting to have me condemned with this feeble excuse for testimony. What did you say? Mr. Natahoto, this is our chance. My lord, the defense requests that the defendant be allowed to speak. He may be privy to important information relating to the testimony just given by the witness. Very well. I'll make an exception and grant the request. The defendant may remain the w in the witness stand for the cross-examination. Then allow me to toast the court's impartiality. Don't raise your glass in my direction, sir. Counsel for the defense, begin the cross-examination immediately. At once, my lord. Yeah, this notebook does have a load of stuff about what the Reaper got up to these past ten days. Hold it! In other words, it shows that Gregson was basically acting as the Reaper. Not you and all. That ain't the only explanation, is it? He could have been investigating the Reaper in secret, and that notebook said what he found out. If I may. When originally people began referring to me as the Reaper, I didn't object. I believe the power to intimidate London's criminal classes into compliance with the law to be beneficial. But you carried out your own investigations into the true identity of the Reaper, didn't you? Yes. Those investigations proved conclusively that Gregson was one arm of the Reaper. One arm? What are you t or what are you on about? The Reaper's victims were all extremely shrewd criminals at the top of their game. There's simply no way one person could have taken it on alone. The Reaper is an organization. With you at its head. 
I had spies at the yard keeping me abreast of Gregson's movements, letting me know when he was elsewhere. So I'd been able to check the most recent entry in his book. I knew the location. You knew it said Grouse? Bruce? Grouse? Believing it to be a reference to the Gentleman's Club, I went there on the day in question to investigate. Alone. Ah, so that explains why several members of the club claim to have seen you there. But of course, the inspector was not there. Because at the time, he was making his way to the steamship docked in the northern coast of France. Gross, like the bird. As shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. Very well, then. Back to your testimony about the contents of this notebook. Fine. Yes, that's why he was going to France. He went to France for one day before he was killed. And it seems like he was sent to either keep an eye on or kill Judge Jikoku from Japan. Is something wrong, Mr. Natahodo? You seemed a little shocked by something a moment ago. Oh, no, it's just... It's all right. Overthinking this, aren't I? Names of the victims, dates and places and stuff, and every last entry... Er, and the last entry on there was the 31st of October. Hold it! Names of victims, dates, places and stuff. What in particular? Well, besides the victims' names, this other name kept cropping up. What other name was that? It's the one I told you yesterday. The same name, written over and over again. You mean... Asa Shin? Yeah, that's the one. She's a friend of yours, Asama, isn't she? You haven't listening yesterday? Asa Shin. The assassin. What? Well, like a killer, you mean? Gregson was the tactician. One who came up with the plan of attack. He investigated the marks thoroughly, finding out when they would be vulnerable. Who to use to get at them. But the person actually executing his plans was someone else, you're saying? If that's true... And the Reaper does indeed start to sound like an organized group of vigilantes. Ha! Ah, and perhaps what it said on the passport document. Permission for the applicant and one additional person to travel. Could that be the... Er, could that additional person have been... Clearly the assassin. It was meant to take Seishiro Jikoku's life. Gina, can you confirm that? against the final entry that listed Grouse and Seshiro Jikoku. What name was written? Oh, well, that's the only entry that didn't have a name next to it, as it... as it happens. I've lost Gina's voice, I'm sorry. What? It... it just had, a, like, a question mark or summit there, I think. In other words, Gregson himself didn't know the identity of the assassin in that case. But, Gregson was the one making the plans, was he not? Oh, how infuriating. A nameless assassin. It said Grouse, for the place on that date, and then the name of the mock. Hold it! And you're saying that the mark listed was Seishiro Jikoku. That's what it said. Funny name, if you ask me. And I thought your name was odd. So pleased to have lost my crown there. Mr. Jikoku is the presiding judge of Japan's Supreme Court of Judicature. I remember the man. He came to our company as a visiting student 16 years ago. Studying international law and diplomacy under your tutelage, Lord Strongheart. 
That bearded young fellow was a very able man, I must say. So Lord Strongheart was Judge Jikoku's mentor. If I'm not mistaken, he returned to Japan ten years ago now. Ten years ago? After that fateful case? Precisely. In the aftermath of the Professor case, his reputation was organ- er, his repatriation was organized immediately. It's a mystery why such a man would be listed in the inspector's notebook. I didn't think it was possible, but the mood in here has got even worse now. Maybe I'll just keep talking. There was a note about him being a criminal and what got away from the Reaper in court ten years ago or summit. Hold it! What do you mean a criminal? Judge Jikoku is no criminal. Well, don't ask me. I don't know nothing about it. Oh, do you remember what father told us? That Judge Jikoku did once appear in court here in Britain. It's related to the Professor case, I'm sure. Er, it was related to the Professor case, I'm sure. Yes, of course, you're right. So Shiro was trying to mitigate Genshin's guilt, so he took, this, he took to the stand to testify. But he got a little carried away and, uh, actually managed to break the witness stand. He also said some contemptuous words about the British Empire, for which he was charged. It was a pitiful situation, yes. I'd forgotten all about it. I prosecuted that trial too, as it happens. You did? It was considered to be an be an adjunct to the professor proceedings, you see. But he was acquitted after being told to make rep reparation for the damage caused to the stand. And there you have it. Have what? Surely the accused hasn't forgotten his own rule. That there's no saving anyone, anyone who faces the reaper in court. Guilty or innocent alike. What? No! Uh, are you suggesting that the reason Judge Jikoku was targeted for assassination... The man was sent back to Japan immediately after the trial. The Reaper had no time to do his work. But then, ten years later, the Mark returns to Britain once more. Perhaps now you start to see just how vindictive the Reaper is. Come on, that's absurd! To take someone's life for that? Isn't the whole premise of the Reaper absurd? Killing those who have been found innocent? Clearly the rules by which the man operates are beyond a sane person's comprehension. But... Right, I've just ha I've just had about enough of this. Gina? All this nonsense about the boss planning to kill people. It's cobblers. Come on, Odo. Yes? Why aren't you saying nothing? Why? Why aren't you yelling out an objection or summit? What? You've got to find a flaw. You do usually. Someone's lying here, no question. You gotta work out who it is. Please. For the boss. That outburst was an insult to the court in your own testimony. I might have known that a common pickpocket from the back slums couldn't make a detective. When this trial is over, you will forfeit your warrant card, Miss Lestrade. Is that clear? I've had it with the lot of you. It's lies, every bleeding place you look in this world, innit? Well, I've had enough. Gina. So have I. After that little speech of Gina's, I've made up my mind. 
To do what, Mr. Natahodo? There was one point in this cross-examination. When something that was just said just didn't sit right with me. One statement that seemed odd. Oh, d do you mean... Not going to let Gina's plea for help fall on deaf ears. Hmm. I'm gonna save just in case. somewhere hold it I want to thank you Gina you helped me find my resolve eh? what do you mean amongst everything we've heard during this cross-examination there's one thing that defies explanation one inconsistency what inconsistency Really, Odo? I don't quite know what it means yet, but... Yes, there's an inconsistency in something that was said by... You know, I think it was Van Zeeks, but like... I want to point the... I want to point at Strongheart just because he's being an ass. Definitely something strange about that that about it that didn't add up. The inconsistency is a statement made by this person. Objection! <laughs> People can only be inconsistent with what they say if they actually testify. <laughs> I like this. But in case you hadn't noticed, the person you're accusing isn't even at the stand. Ah. <sighs> Benzevere is unable to respond to that replication to that replication. Any further obviously deliberate obstructions to these proceedings will not be tolerated, Council. I just wanted to see what would happen. Take that! Of course, by you, Lord Venzeeks. Strongheart then comes to personally beat the shit out of you with his gavel. Me? What? Your face is turned to ashen. How can he know? Is what you th is that what you're thinking? If my face is turned to ashen, it's because I'm thinking. How could he? <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this, but maybe the evidence you're obviously about to show the court will clarify. In that case, the defense will present evidence to substantiate its claim. To which piece of evidence does, does this alleged cons inconsistency relate? What? Huh? Um... I don't know. Um... <laughs> hey, Not, how are you doing? Um... We've already taken a look at the rabbit. We can't pull its ears yet. You missed a lot today because you felt tired. I don't know what I'm supposed to present here. Uh, yes, please. I need help with this. Uh, I genuinely don't remember what the statement is that I'm supposed to be pointing out an inconsistency with. Uh, this is like... Van Zeeks, you said something inconsistent. Oh, 
Oh, okay. That's a good point, Sachi. Well, the club. Take that! I'd hope not to have to present this evidence, but you leave me no choice. What do you say to this, Lord Van Zeeks? Your feelings were correct. Presenting that evidence was a mistake. I suggest you withdraw it. Sorry? Good advice. Because you've turned decidedly ashen. <laughs> Only hope the Reaper doesn't hold that against you. Uh, fingers crossed. I think this line of argument has run its course. I suggest you learn from your mistakes before you make a, f a fatal one in the eyes of the Reaper. Uh, better listen very carefully to the testimony again. Georgina, I think she hasn't already told us. There's no point in trying to get more out of her. Did you notice how Kazuma-sama reacted to Lord Van Zeeks's words? He called him even a more in uh, an even more sinister reaper, you mean? Well, I'm sure Kazuma intends to eliminate any shred of doubt that the man's guilty. He's looking for revenge against the person he considers to be his father's killer, after all. I do worry that if we fail to find a discrepancy in this testimony somewhere, the trial may end and adjudication won't go in our favor. Let's listen carefully again to what everyone is saying. Okay, so I think it was in this statement. Someone's acting as the Reaper. I originally, or when originally people began referring to me as the Reaper, I didn't object. Get out your own investigations into the true identity of the Reaper. Investigations prove conclusively that Gregson was one arm of the Reaper. Arm, what are you on about? Those victims were all extremely shrewd criminals at the top of their game. There's simply no way the per uh, there's simply no way one person could have taken the them on alone. The Reaper is an organization. Do it to the its head. I spies in the yard, keeping me abreast of Gregson's movements, letting me it's elsewhere, so I've been able to check the most recent entry in his book, Vacation. It's a grouse. Leaving it to be a reference to the Gentleman's Club, I went there on the day in question to investigate alone. Of course, the inspector was not there. At the time, he was making his way to a steamship docked on the northern coast of France. As shown by the passport, and in the victim's metal trunk. Very right, well then, back to your testimony about the contents of this notebook. I didn't get penalized for the uh, fault for the uh, incorrect evidence. Hold it! We do have the autopsy report. It's just, um, the thing that, as if we scroll back here, um, 
I had spies of the art keeping me abreast of Gregson's movements, letting me know when he was elsewhere, so I'd been able to check the most recent entry in his book. I knew the location. He knew it said Grouse. Believing it to be a reference to the Gentleman's Club, I went there on the day in question to investigate, alone. That explains why several murders of the, er, members of the club claimed to have seen you there. Of course, the inspector wasn't there, because at the time he was making his way to the steamship docked on the northern coast of France, as shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. And then this is where Ryunosuke notices something off. Rouse, consider the name closely. I might have an idea. I think that what I'm supposed to be thinking is that if Kazuma's assertion is true, and because he's asserting, oh, uh, Barak Von Zeeks was in cahoots with Gregson, he wouldn't have gone to the Gentleman's Club because he, like, he would have already known that he was there. Do you see what I mean? He would have already known that he was going to the boat instead of the club. Take that! What? I'm surprised that this doesn't give a... Is it Kazuma saying the inconsistency? Like, will it... Will it let me point out Kazuma? Because the Lin, I tried to point out someone that wasn't on the, uh... Bench. He's like, hey, uh, dumbass. Okay. By you, Kazuma Asogi. Me? There's some attempt at filibustering counsel. Prosecutor Asogi has given no testimony. What are you suggesting I said that was inconsistent? You let something slip that you shouldn't have. When I present the relevant piece of evidence, I imagine you've, you'll realize what you've done. Very well then, counsel. Go ahead. What evidence reveals this alleged inconsistency in something Prosecutor Asogi has said? Take that! This is not case four anymore. This is case five. So, my initial impressions were correct. This is nonsense. What? Ah. You accuse your best friend and back it up with that. Clearly, the Ryanosuke Narahodo I know is dead. Uh, struck down by my best friend. I believe what you intended to point out, Mr. Narahodo, was what Kazuma said. Well, they're, they're the same case. Because at the time he was making his way to the steamship docked on the northern coast of France. As shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. Oh, it's the metal trunk. 
I take it from your expression, you're not going to let this go. <clears throat> Correct, my lord. I made a mistake, that's all. They basically just kind of sectioned off uh, the this last trial segment into its own case. What are you suggesting I said that was inconsistent? You let something slip that you shouldn't have. Confidence save. Collectively, it's like 15 to 20 hours. Honestly, considering how long the last court section took in the first Great Ace Attorney, I fully expect this to be like another full episode, if not two full more episodes. Take that! This is a trunk that belonged to Inspector Gregson. Metal construction, is it? It's certainly very heavy. What's this? What? Bloodstain. The relatively fresh one, too. Like how they told you you have the right idea and the wrong piece of evidence? I feel like if... <laughs> There was a blood stain here? There was a blood stain here that I just didn't notice. Look at this dark stain here. Do you think? Yes, I'm afraid so. I think it's blood. Ugh, I knew you were gonna say that. So that presumably means... That this was present at the scene when Inspector Gregson was killed. It's the most logical conclusion, yes. I think Gina's been carrying this around with her. I didn't know any better. I suppose this does look like a grease stain from all the fish and chips. What? You, you mean that ain't grease from all the boss's fish, fish and chips? Fresh blood on the inspector's trunk. That suggests the victim was traveling with that luggage when he was killed. That can't be. There's no mention of any trunk in Scotland Yard's report. Yes, there's a reason for that. Immediately after the inspector's body was discovered, one of the street peddlers made off with the trunk. Hoping to sell it. But I found it, me. We've with me nose for trouble. Huh. Which means that nobody should have known anything about the trunk. Unless, of course, we're talking about somebody who was present when the victim was killed. And yet, during the cross examination of the witness just now, you said this, Kazuma. As at the time, he was making his way to the steamship docked on the northern coast of France. As shown by the passport found in the victim's metal trunk. So the question is, how did you know about the inspector's trunk? We know the man went on a trip to France. Where else would he have put his passport? Objection! But you knew it was a metal trunk. Answer me honestly, Kazuma. On the 31st of October, where exactly were you? At the port of Dunkirk, on board the SS Grouse. Is that the answer you're looking for, Ryunosuke? Kazuma, what did you... I hadn't considered the possibility before, but... If Kazuma was there on the ship, then it c then it can have only been for one purpose. Oh no, Mr. Narahodo. Surely... Surely you don't think... <laughs> Come on, Ryunosuke. You know the rules. The only thing that really talks in the courtroom is hard evidence. As I understand it, Inspector Gregson always took that case with him when he traveled. So as it stands, you've proved nothing. Kazuma... Are 
you challenging me to prove it beyond all reasonable doubt? That you were there that day? In the same place as the inspector. He, he was there. With Gregson? There's a clue that you've overlooked. A secret that the trunk can tell us. Can't be sure at this point. I'll need to verify it. I have a nasty feeling that I'm going to be right. The accusation being made here is deeply disturbing. But nevertheless, we must test it. The defense will identify for the court where the trunk is alle in the alleged er, where in the trunk this alleged clue is to be found. Where is the evidence that ties Prosecutor Asogi to Inspector Gregson? Got it! This is your proof. What do you say to that, Prosecutor Asogi? Personally, I think tying the defense counsel to the inspector's trunk and tossing it into the sea would be more helpful. What? At least that way, London's courtrooms will be safe from his destructive accusations. I believe that was a rather long-winded way of telling you that you're wrong, Mr. Natahodo. Very well. Let us see if you sink or swim under the weight of this penalty, Council. Mr. Natahodo, you can't allow yourself to be drowned at sea yet. I was hoping to never let that happen, funnily enough. The fence will identify the court. Or, or the court, where the trunk is. It's alleged clue. Where in the trunk the alleged clue is to be found? That? There's something stuck in the side of the trunk there. It's glinting. It looks like a fragment of metal of some sort. But it's wedged in so tightly I can't remove it. Well, don't cut yourself. You'd better leave it, I think. Got it! That's some bullshit. There's a small piece of metal lodged in the wall of the trunk here. Like the tip of a blade. Yeah, a blade? Kazuma, slung around your waist, as ever today, is the esteemed blade Karma. Of course it is. Won't you draw it, here in this courtroom, for all to see? Exercise caution, my learned friend. That man is the son of London's most notorious killer. Lif, watch Prosecutor Asogi like a hawk. That won't be necessary. Oh no! The tip is broken. If the fragment of metal from the trunk fits together with the end of the sword, the question of who is there with Inspector Gregson will be answered. Agreed, Kazuma Asogi. Did you have to specifically examine that from the inside to get that... ...done properly? Expertly done, Ryunosuke. That's a point to you, and well-deserved. And to tell the court, Prosecutor Asogi. Yes. On the 31st of October, I accompanied Inspector Gregson to Dunkirk. In order to carry out a mission. So the additional person authorized to travel was me. The mission was the assassination of the Mark. Wh what? You mean you're the killer whose name was omitted from this notebook? You are following the Reaper's orders to dispatch Judge Jikoku? Let me make one thing perfectly clear. 
I have killed no one. Explain. I accepted the assassination mission, yes. And I accompanied Gregson to Dunkirk. But I never had any intention of carrying out the plan. We're never going to do it? If we can believe Kazuma-sama, I'm sure. After all, Judge Jikoku arrived safely in London the following day. On the 31st, I boarded the train from London with Inspector Gregson. We traveled to Dover from where we crossed the channel to Dunkirk. Then we boarded the SS Grouse and made for the cabin deck, as indicated in the plan. You went to Judge Jikoku's cabin? Exactly. He wasn't there, though. We decided to wait, but... Birdie told us that you had no intention of going through with it anyway. I didn't come to Great Britain to take anyone's life. So I left Gregson and disembarked the ship. I spent that night at a boarding house in the town. I returned to England the following morning. Boarding house? In Dunkirk? My signature will be in the register book. It would be simple enough to verify. Then... What became of Jikoku? Gregson was no assassin, so the mark was spared. I'm sure it's easy enough to imagine what happened after that. Gregson returned to England as well, having failed to complete the mission. He met with the Reaper in that room on Fresno Street to report the failure. Causing the infuriated mastermind to pull the trigger. And end his wretched agent's life. Yeah, I know, right? This doesn't provide him with a... With a... Like, anything even resembling an alibi. That's the real truth behind Inspector Gregson's murder. OBJECTION! What if you did nothing as you claim? How did the tip of your sword come to be lodged in the inspector's trunk? I don't need to answer that. Like, fuck you do! Answer the damn question! The victim was killed by a gunshot. A small fragment of a Japanese blade isn't relevant to the case. Fuck off, Kazuma. And accordingly, I chose to exercise my right to silence on that matter. Be that as it may, the court will sequester the sword as evidence. As you wish, my lord. We must take immediate action now, to verify whether Sin Seishiro Jikoku remains unharmed. What? R remains unharmed? I agree. That should be our first priority. It's recently come to my attention that he hasn't been seen since yesterday. Karma. Great Blade. It's such a thing of beauty, I want to gaze on it for hours. The tip of the great sword, broken. It's such a shame, it's been so meticulously cared for over the years. I can almost hear Karma's sobs. Kazuma must have really taken a swing for that to happen.
it's recently come to my attention that he hasn't been seen since yesterday. Uh, how did you? When a foreign dignitary involved in Great Britain goes missing for 24 hours. It's only natural that the question of his safety should arise. You don't mean to say that you think Judge Jikoku may have been killed? Reaper has more than one assassin at his disposal, as he has the power to influence and give orders from the inside of a prison cell, or and he has the power. Isn't that right, Lord Van Zeeks? If I were truly the Reaper, I'd be able to tell you. Order. Order in the court. Order! We will take an emergency recess for 30 minutes. Now? Guests of the symposium have been told to maintain a regular contact with the organizer's office. Gay yeah, undertone is normal in these games, yeah. The man can't be located within half an hour. You'll have to assume the worst. Oh no, not Judge Jikoku. No one would want to kill. No one would want to kill a harmless Japanese man who'd only just arrived in the country. Except that is, for the Reaper, wanting to finish off a mark that slipped through the net ten years ago. I would have to agree, Mister Narahodo. For the defense's sake. M my lord? I sincerely hope we are successful. We are unable to confirm Mr. Jakoku's healthy existence. In the next 30 minutes, you will face grave difficulties. Ah. Court is adjourned for 30 minutes. Kazuma-sama, the Reaper's assassin. I feel as though I'm in a nightmare. I hardly believe it either. But on the other hand, Kazuma isn't in the habit of making up stories. I have such a terrible sense of foreboding. If something awful has happened to Judge Jikoku, then I feel as though things will only spiral further and further out of control. Felt it from the moment I stepped into the courthouse this morning. That strange sensation when we were, or that we were careening toward a foregone conclusion. Well, in the worst case, we might only have 30 minutes left. Unfortunately though, I don't think there's anything we can do but wait now. We're out of options. Actually, there may be one last hand we can play. Or rather, one last ear. Of course. The little Mr. Sholmes doll that Iris gave us. If for some reason you completely run out of options in the trial today, then just pull this little Hurley's ears as hard as you possibly can. Perhaps now is the time. What should I do? Pull Harley's ears or not? Here goes then. I'm going to do it. Good luck, Mr. Narahodo. No looking back. Heave! Ow! That... That scream sounded like Mr. Sholmes. M Mr. Sholmes, where are you? Here, my dear fellow, here. It's the felt dull talking. Pull the ears again, Mr. Narahodo, as hard as you can. All right then, I'll put all my strength into it. Heave. Ow. Please, my dear fellows, you don't need to pull my ear off. 
Mr. Sholmes, where, where are you? Myself and my trusty partner are presently in the first class cabin area of the SS Grouse. The SS Grouse? She left Dover last night after the final pieces of cargo were loaded. <laughs> this is awesome. We are currently docked at Dunkirk, but due to the due to be underway again in half an hour. You've taken a ship to France? Please, even with my athletic prowess, I would struggle to jump the Straits of Dover. After we left Baker Street last night, we hurried by cab to the station and by train to the port in order to board this vessel in time. So you mean you'd already worked it out? That the steamship was where everything really took place? Mr. Natahodo, pray, what is my name? Erlock Sholmes, world famous great detective. Recited to perfection, well done. You're a genius, Mr. Sholmes. That's the only word for it. Ow, ow, ow! Miss Yusato, gently with this genius's ear, please. Oh my, I'm ever so sorry. If I may, Sholmes. Ah, there you are, Mikotoba. You remember that it was in fact I who made the connection to the SS Grus? At Scotland Yard yesterday when we examined that notebook. I recalled my steamship ticket. <laughs> but of course it was, my dear fellow. And not once did I controvert that fact. I merely had our cord-bound companions utter my name. Yes, you did, didn't you? You just entered a recess. The trial resumes in 30 minutes from now. I like the Mikatoba twist. Yeah, I liked it. And if we're unable to present any new leads, then I'm afraid to say... Do not fret, please. It is for precisely that purpose that my partner and I have made this journey. I have no doubt we shall have a welcome news for you within half the hour... within the half hour. Thank you, Mr. Sholmes. That would be wonderful. Until later, then. Yes, you'll be hearing from us if you're not in touch first. Ow, 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 ow! I shan't be hearing anything if you keep tugging on my ear in that mindless fashion. Yeah, exactly. It's great. Whatever was the idea behind making the receiver operated in that way in the first place, Sholmes? Why the deuce would I know? It's Iris's invention, not mine. So I know how much you're enjoying being the hero of the hour, Sholmes. You'll put half that now before the, gro the grouse puts to sea again. If we don't conclude our investigations rapidly, we shall find ourselves in... Apples? Nepal's? I don't know. Or long. Hmm. There are times, Mikotoba, when you make a surprising amount of sense. So, let us begin. Naples? Napalm? Discuss cabin number two. Yes, this is the one. I don't believe an investigation of the cabin is going to be plain sailing. Truman standing in front of the door is an angry looking fellow. Why are you loitering here? Who are you? My dear fellow, do you not recognize a world famous great detective when you see one? The question really ought to be who are you? Do not recognize world traveling great sailor. Chicken. Oh. Chicken Stroganov. When you see. A detective? Ha! Huh, I don't think so.
chicken stroganoff, yeah. Lobster, you missed it. This guy has I what I would assume is a sibling whose name is Beef Stroganov. <laughs> you see that, Mr. Mikotoba? It would appear that this man is a devoted follower of mine. It's me, and a tattoo that says Sholmes. I must say, whilst, su whilst such an adoration is flattering, naturally it does leave me a little cold. What are you talking about? Leave, now! How distressing. My loyal devotee knows me only by name and not by appearance. And yet, I already know a great deal about you, sir. You have a brother, I believe. Like yourself, he's a shipman. Currently traveling the world aboard a Russian steamship, in fact. Do you know this? Elementary, my dear Mikotoba. I'm sure it was. <laughs> Three days ago, I was bound for London aboard this ship, you see. Looking for one of my fellow passengers. A man by the name of Jikoku. No one with his name on board. You know that he purchased a ticket for passage. Ah, you mean Eastern Man. He left ship two hours ago. You're a Dunkirk. He said something about emergency, I think. What? Uh, are you sure? So Seishiro's realized we're after him, has he? His cabin is the one behind you. We should like to investigate, please. No. I've ordered not to let even Mouse inside. Mikotoba, be a good man and draw the sailor's attention away, would you? Make up some excuse so he leaves the area. It's a great detective see. Even sailors have ears, both left and right. Curses! This the, the plan is ruined. Only yourself to blame, I'm afraid, Sholmes. Get it. Cabin door is locked. Even if I am not here, you cannot get inside. Mikotoba, I'm sure you haven't forgotten my special talent, have you? Putting any lock? Within a mere five seconds. So if you'd be so kind as to afford me the requisite time, old friend, in your typically accommodating matter. How could I refuse such a typically unappealing request, old friend? Need to distract that burly sailor for five seconds, do I? Good man, so, the game is afoot. And as much as I hate to do it to you, uh, we're gonna have to end here. Lock picking 100, yeah. Honestly, I don't even know how much not do we even have a full stream left at this point or is there more than that left because like is there gonna be another investigation segment there's enough for another full stream more than that <laughs> jeez big ass case There won't be more investigating, it's just all trial from here on out. But it's a long trial, I assume. It's gonna be a long trial. <laughs> so yeah, uh, exclamation point Discord if you want to join the Discord. Exclamation point socials if you want to uh, check out the VODs channel or my Blue Sky. Um, there will, mo like, 99% not be a stream tomorrow because, um, 
I need to get extra sleep so that I can stream three hours after my normal end time. Because I'm doing a multi on the 4th with a couple of friends. We're, we're, get, we're uh, bringing back the Link to the Past rando addiction. Coming back in full force. Um, otherwise, give me just a moment and we'll find someone to raid. Okay, um... Also, I will make sure to put a, a uh, notification. I'll make sure to put a uh, notification in the uh, Discord tomorrow saying like, oh, I'm not streaming now, but um, I will be streaming uh, later. You know what I mean. Um, give me just a sec. Sin is just ending. Um, who else is available? Um, let's see if it will let me raid Toki. Fuck. Ah, I. Hate Twitch sometimes. It's so bad. Last time with Sin was very funny, yeah. Um, okay, I guess let's raid Mina. Mina's playing Persona 3 Reload. So I'm gonna have to dip out uh, faster than usual because I don't want spoilers. Oh, so, you know. Only one episode in, so it should be early game Persona 3 stuff. Oh wait, Mina might also be ending. <laughs> Give me a sec, I need to double check that. <laughs> All of my normal raid targets are, ru are running away. I forgot to unmute. Uh, what have you got for P3 Reload, Sachi? Because I got hit with an ad right as I uh, clicked into Mina's stream to double check. Wave VT. So yeah, uh, thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, no stream tomorrow. Well, stream significantly later than usual. Personally, still think P3 was the best one in the series. 
my opinions on the Persona games are as follows. Three for story, four for characters, five for gameplay. <laughs> Though I haven't played one or either of the two duology, so, you know. But yeah, I will be streaming Persona 3 Re Reload, I swear. It's just not going to be immediately after this because I, I feel like I've been playing way too many really long games back to back to back to back. <laughs> And I don't think that uh, starting P3 Reload only to then get stuck in it for another month and a half would be great. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna play something short after we're done with this. But yeah. Uh, otherwise. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope to see you tomorrow if you're able to come to the multi-randomizer stream. And I guess, uh, have a good one, and take care.